how I put it? It was like, what do you care about them? What do you care about those people? What difference does it make to you? Take care of your own life. Do the best you can for you and your family. What do the rest of the people mean to you? They don't mean anything to you. They're just serfs. They're just people. You know, what's the end goal? The end goal is to get everybody chipped. To control the whole society. So they, they want a one world government controlled by them. Everybody has an RFID chip implanted in them. And if you're like me or you, and you're protesting what they're doing, they can just turn off your chip. One, two, one, two. Welcome back to the one and only. Rise above, generate, generate. Rise above, stick with fear. Rise above, abstract stillness. Big shout out to everyone tuned in. You know what time it is. It's roughly 9 p.m. on a Friday night, and we are back here at Rise Above HQ. Big shout out to everyone tuned in. First of all, can everyone hear us clearly? Say hello, Andy PG. What's going on? Shalom. Shalom, Michael. <laughs> no. Um, um, and uh, Becky S, yes, can you say hello as well? You, need, you probably need to grab the mic. Hi. There you go. <laughs> Hello, Becky S. How Hi. you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Very good indeed. <laughs> so, last week, mate, we... Uh, we raw. Had, yes, it's right. We're back. Last week, we had an absolute barnstormer of a set in the studio with Ramish Radio. This week, we are returning with a very special presentation from the one and only Human Vibration coming up really, really soon. Oh, that's a nice T-shirt. It might be. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at that. Enki. It's an anagram of Nike. It is, of course, an yeah, anagram, yeah. anagram You've of Nike. You've got to touch it. Yeah. yeah, touch it. Oh, it's felt. Yeah, it's vinyl. It's oh, like nice. 3D fluff vinyl. It's, it's a one of get, a kind, actually. Maybe we should get those on the website. It's a one of a kind. Lovely jubbly. Um, yeah, guys, so welcome back. Who have we got tuned in? Kyle Rattigan, I can see you there. Casey Connolly, big shout to the uh, crew at Liberty Silver Designs. I can see Lord Doobsworth. He's already in the chat, as per damn usual. Big shout to Delta Dawn. Big shout to Pamela Swan, our mods. Eye for an eye. Long time moderator there. Welcome back. Rachel McCaskill as well. Yes. Sorry, mate. I thought my headphones just died then. Did they? That's right. They needed a wiggle. Oh, right. They just needed a wiggle. So, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Uh, this is a, a one-off made by my Ramish wife sitting on the altar there. Yeah, so we're very pleased actually to be joined by uh, to, by Becky S this week. Um, let me just put Becky S's QR code on the screen. If you want to check out um, any of her work, this is the QR code to get to her link tree. Wait, what 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 can we find on the link tree, Becky? Uh, it's just a link to my Instagram and the Facebook page with my portfolio on, and to get in touch if you want to book in. What about Redbubble? Is is your site on there as well? Not yet. No, I want to I want to make a load of new stuff for. For that, before I put it everywhere. Wicked, <laughs> wicked. Oh yeah, some also some new news for uh, for Rise Above. We have joined something called Patreon. Some people this is very very popular with. Don't worry, guys. Friday night is never going to be behind a paywall. But what this is, it's like buy us a coffee, but it's like a monthly thing. If if you want to, I set it to three dollars and thirty three cents. Of course. But it come out like three pound, and we've had a uh, big shout out to King of Sting, um, and also to Nick. We you know it, it's it's a way to support us as well. Um, and there will be. Oh, I can. I see yeah, you've got yeah, your, yeah, the King of Sting. Yeah, you've got the Aaron <laughs> Silver pendant on there. Lovely, lovely little move. Yeah, it's a great way to support us, guys. Um, for a couple of pounds a month, um, obviously that helps us out with our running costs and everything like that. And I promise there are actually going to be some special off the cuff, behind the scenes vlogs from myself and Andy PG that only go onto the Patreon. So there will be some exclusive, um, you know, behind the scenes chats and uh, off the cuff discussions. Maybe maybe some stuff we don't talk about on camera. Yeah, yeah, for because sure. it, you know that you can't get done by Al Gore on Patreon, can no, you? No, no, no. Yeah, well, sure well, well, well. Mark Passio has been fully er eradicated <laughs> from Patreon. Okay, well, hey, let's face it. There's only one way to find out. 
isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, it so going. far, we haven't got bans from buy us a coffee, and um, some some loyal supporters have bought us a little coffee. It's basically right if, if you don't want to fork out on a t-shirt or a hoodie, you know, like thirty or forty quid or, or dollars or whatever, um, the, a couple of quid. It's a great way to support us, and uh, obviously, all help is pr- appreciated. Rise above live is always free, but producing it isn't. Yes, human vibration is waiting in the oh, wings. Just, yeah. I, I've just got a few more words to say. No, no, I just poked her in the green room. That, you know. All oh, right, right. She can't. She can't see your finger when you poke. No, her no, no I know. I was doing it to, <laughs> to get right. your attention. Okay, I see. I see. Yeah, Ramish Radio last week was absolutely sick. Massive shout to Magics and Gritty. They played an amazing, basically, pretty much a three-hour set. Myself and Manic, I, I thought we... I left, mate. It was far too many people in the that, studio. Yeah, there was a lot yeah. of people here, and you know, to be honest, um, that la- last week was that 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 genre of music smashed it. Next one, we'll concentrate on another genre, maybe D and B. For manic, yeah. <laughs> make sure you go back and uh, make sure you go back and watch that. Yeah, so, but sometimes I'm not prepared for the D and B with the bars, and I'm like, like oh, repeating on, man, myself. You know, yeah, you've got to do that. Um, again, if you want to see us guys performing live, the only place you're going to get to see us perform live this this year, I believe, so far, is Sounds Beautiful Festival. This is at the end of June. It is on a large country estate in Dorset family camping all weekend long with a whole host of other um, freedom-based artists, speakers, activities there as well. Some of your favourites, some of the people that have been on the show, Mark Devlin, allegedly Dave, and a few others as well. We're going to be performing an exclusive two-hour set on the Friday night. Um, f- four DJs, two MCs, and I think we're on before Slipmat. So yeah, get your tickets by scanning the QR code. That sounds beautiful, Festival, the, uh, the last weekend in, in June coming up soon another big shout and don't worry we're getting to uh, we're getting to a human vibration pretty soon next week there is no show next week on the on the friday night not a live show there will be a broadcast with some of slick rick's editing he's done so many new bite size so i'm going to do you um, uh, a little schwabbery for friday night but thursday is the next installment of our academy this is our learning portal guys and next week we have got the one and only inspector veg He's going to be live and direct for a small group of you. I think there's about eight to nine people so far. So it's going to be quite an intimate experience, a great chance to get down uh, to business with the inspector, ask him questions about all of the insights into the uh, into the healthy lifestyle that he's been pursuing. Check this video. Raw. <laughs> Thank you, Andy PG. Inspector, what can we expect with this Q&A you're doing with Raw Academy next Thursday? Inspector, get healthy. You see most people in society... Big fat worms, blood Ugh. like milkshake, yeah? Rough. We're going to teach you how to oxygenate the blood so you can start to feel your own feelings, get in touch with your true self. And we're going to teach you about electric foods, foods that are primordial. These foods send their roots into the ground five feet deep and convert the minerals from a soul into a liquid digestible substance and electrify the body because the body is electric. Expect to get healthy. Yeah, you heard it here first. Scan the QR code. It's over two hours. There is a one-on-one consultation with the inspector in private. If um, on a, It's either going to be on WhatsApp or Telegram because we appreciate not everyone wants to talk about their personal health problems in a, in a Zoom call. Or their worms. <laughs> yeah, or their worms with other people there. So that's going to be on the menu as well. Uh, get on riseabove.tv. Ra Academy is a great way to support us and the teachers and instructors that we have on because we go 50-50 with all these guys. So it supports everyone. Oh, yeah. Uh, Veg, if you're listening, mate, sorry, I will get back to your messages. I've been super busy lately. Oh, right. Have you been ignoring him? No, no, I haven't messages? been ignoring him. I just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Johnny Fogg shouted me with this meme this week. It's at the car wash. And I was like, what's going on with this meme? It says something about a complete clean foaming Lance jet wash. What have you put up on the screen there, Becky? Co- oh, is that a comment That's from a Casey? Comment. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't see it. <laughs> this is the uh, th- th- this meme was actually created uh, off the back of an experience that he had in the car wash. Something weird happened. He was speaking to someone on the phone. Rise above came up, and then he looked up, and it just said "foaming lance." So nice. he took a photo of it and turned it into a meme. And there I am at the car wash. Who's that? Uh, Johnny Fogg made this nice. one. Yeah, at the car wash. Um, and just before we get to our guest, I've just got to talk about this that happened to, uh, the other day. I came across this meme. Okay, and I and I thought it was like I, th- I thought it was quite fitting. I, I really I really resonated with me. It says, "From a young age, I was prepared for the world to be evil and cruel, but I was never prepared for it to be this gay and stupid." No, <laughs> we didn't come up with this meme. I just found it. I shared it. But wow, it's gone mad. Um, until about five minutes ago, it's on nine hundred and fifty-six likes, two hundred and thirty-three shares, hundreds comments. Um, but 
most people are like, yeah, this really summed up the, what we think about clown world. Like, well, it's gay and stupid. It is gay and stupid. But you know what the really sad thing is? I've had people like accusing me of being homophobic. Oh, because oh and I had to point out, sorry, the word gay it, since at least the nineteen yeah. nineties has been used as a general yeah. derogatory term for things that are yeah. annoying, cringe. No, fuck off, you gay. Disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, language is fluid. But I just thought, like, this has got like t four times the engagement of any of my really insightful digs or anything like that. It, it's almost up there with the circus. Maybe speech that's what at, it at this takes at this level. Yeah, this is what it takes. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to save the other bits of clan world which I've dissected. Um, from the last few weeks, that clip stuff, because I, I, I don't know if if uh, HV is going to cover that in a presentation, which is coming up right about now. Let me just get the screen sorted out. So, without a doubt, Human Vibration is probably one of our like dearest guests on the show. Would you not say like this is like the sixth one of the originals for the presentation appearance, yeah. sixth appearance now. She's a veteran, an absolute an absolute rise above veteran. And what's very special is. These presentations, which you see on the show, she doesn't do these anywhere else. She doesn't really appear on camera anywhere else. She goes on um, Realized Radio with she Rambo. She likes it, though. She's told us she likes it because yeah. we're the only well, people she does that. We, we, are, we are very blessed to welcome back the one and only Human Vibration. Hi. Hey, guys. How's it going? It's going great. I've got my merch on and everything. I am so official. It's my sixth You're appearance. Ramish. You're looking Ramish. Yeah. Rise above, rise above. So the last you. time we saw you was actually f in, in London when we came to physically meet you and give you that T-shirt, right? Yes, yes, yes. And that was an incredible, an incredible time of my life, an incredible trip to London, an incredible meetup with my Realize Radio crew. It was the first time meeting Rambo in real life. It was obviously I got to meet y'all. You guys met Rambo too. It was kind of the Realize Radio plus Rise Above collab. And we were in that just amazing sound garden cafe that it was it was it, awesome it, it was, was really so in the Colton, nice venue in the Colton, wasn't it yeah yeah and it was just and you know what actually that i know the topic we've it's life is but a dream that's going to be the topic today but i have to say that that trip to london <coughs> is the impetus to this presentation that trip made me begin to look at life as potentially a type of hyper lucid dream state instead of a simulation theory or instead of all of these other uh, adaptations or, or theories that we can do on what this waking life is to me it felt like a dream it felt like i was living inside of an absolute dream that i did not want to wake up from every moment was so perfect in a way that just felt like it couldn't be real and that trip left me with this kind of notion that life is some sort of dream state. So I, uh, yeah, here we are months later and now I kind of have a few ideas um, fleshing out what this inclination, this kind of intuitive thought about what this world could be. I mean, nobody knows what life is. Nobody explains sure. what happens when we're no longer here or before we're here or even while we're here. That's up for plenty, plenty of fruitful debate. And, uh, yeah, I remember the energy of yeah. that day because me and Andy got there a little bit early and we sort of chose the table. Yeah, I'd already driven four hours. Three, yeah, well, you three driven three you guys He's driven from down, down, down from, from up north. No, from, I, yeah, from I, up. I've driven up from down south and we'd met in the, right in the you know the center of London to meet you. Yeah. And we got to the venue first. We found a, a really nice like table because I was like, right, we want good. We can I make got charged video. twice for that parking as well. You did I get charged, charged 80, twice for the parking. Eighty-two no. quid for parking. But I remember when we sat down and, and once everyone got there. The energy around the table was amazing and we were just all mm. bouncing off each other and, you know, sharing ideas and time was literally flying past yes. so quickly. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, uh, well, I can't remember the name of the chap that was sat across from us, but he was absolutely in his element. Joey. He, Joey, yeah. that's it. Because he Joey. was obviously a big fan of you and Rambo and he yeah. watched Rise Above as well. And he goes like, wow, all you guys are really here. And I'm like <laughs> sat in the middle of you guys having an off camera conversation and it yeah. was absolutely buzzing. And we were buzzing as well. It was, it, yeah, it was a great day overall. See, that's the kind of stuff yeah. you can expect from Patreon guys. So subscribe. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, that absolutely. kind of off the cuff stuff. Yeah. So life is but a dream. The, how, how did we get to this one? I've been trying to get you on the show for a little while again, and I tried to line up something with Jason. You're, our, you're our joint favourite Texan. Yes, our joint favourite Texan. <laughs> you are. Right, I've got another one competing for that top. No, that no, no, top there's no competition. <laughs> they're, they're, you're two very different um, uh, guests that we have on the show to do presentations. 
but we thought it would be good if you two met. So Lance tried to make it happen. You did try, didn't you? I did try, but it was more like, I feel like not only with the, the logistics of getting you both in the same stream, but also the topics, because Jason has put so much out of, on his theory already. And we di I didn't want him to be rehashing stuff that he'd already done. But anyway... You tried I, to do it for Valentine's Day. Yeah, <laughs> I tried to do it for Valentine's Day as well. You know, it was just over ambitious. But the great yeah. thing is, off the back of that, we have got this new, fresh presentation from you. And they're always fresh. They're always exclusive. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're really, really excited. Life is but a dream. Life is but a dream. Can you guys see it? Is it all queued up? It's, it's all queued up and it's going to okay, be wonderful. on the screen. Here we go. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so, you know, I've kind of given a little intro on to how I arrived here, but I am not the only one who has kicked this idea around. We've actually seen this in quite a bit of media. I think media tells us a lot about the world around us. One movie that really went into the idea of all of these things, that, what life is, this experience, whether it's a dream, whether it's a simulation, Honestly, guys, I don't think we have the right words for these, but they're all just words movies, at the end of the day, aren't they? Yes, they're all just they're all just words at the end of the day, and, and I don't think we have the right vocabulary. And maybe it's not even going to be words. Maybe I I actually have a feeling that it's more musically based as how we're going to communicate or the 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 best way to collectively communicate. But you know, the idea of a dream that feels so real that you cannot be sure if you are dreaming or awake. That's how I felt in London. That is how I felt in London. That is how I felt when I was sitting around the table with, with you know, the people that are closest to me in this world, like this, this little crew of, you know, intellectual misfits um, that we've kind of cultivated with Realize Radio. We, we've never met each other and to, to kind of sit there in, in real life and to really connect and for it to be seamless. And you had mentioned something beautiful about the time. The time flew in a way, the time was fluid and changing in a way that was mind boggling. That was, that was really remarkable. And it just went by like that, just the whole trip, it just in the, the blink of an eye, it was, um, it was here and then it was gone. And there's a, there's a lot of quote. There's a lot of very, very, very intellectual individuals, a lot of great thinkers, a lot of philosophers, old and new, that have kicked around the idea of this world, this reality as we know it, as as a dream state. Uh, this is one of uh, I think of all the quotes about dreams that I came across when I was preparing this presentation. This one really struck me um, as as uh, as very clarifying. All things of the body stream away like a river. All things of the mind are dreams and delusion. View this reality as you view your dreams. And that is Marcus Aurelius. So what do they mean by view this reality as you view your dreams? I kind of took that as, as a... Um, as a directive for the next little section of the presentation, how, how do we view our dreams? What are some hallmarks of dream world? Every human being has experienced some form of dreaming. It's some, it's a, it's one of those universal constants. And yet it's also one of those things that nobody can really wrap their head around what it is, why it is, uh, and, and the, the, the meaning to the, the madness really. But there are some hallmarks of dreams. One of those hallmarks is vividness. Our dreams feel very real. They are visually vivid. They are auditorily. They can be vivid. Not everybody hears in their dreams. Not everybody hears music or hears noise, but they can be. Um, they can even awake all of the senses that we're aware of. You can feel uh, tactile sensations when you're dreaming. You can, especially when you're lucid dreaming, and we'll get more into lucid dreaming later, but you know, one of the things that I do when I experience a lucid dream is I just start to feel the things around me. And I'm always so blown away in the dream that the wall feels like wall and the table feels like table. And it is as true and physical as if I were awake. And yet I know I'm not awake. I know I'm in a lucid dream. I don't lucid dream for that long. I only, you know, once I know I'm, once I am aware that I have lucidity, that's usually, I have about, you know, just a few moments to test things out. And then I usually wake up pretty soon after that. But 
vividness, hyper vividness. That is something that we can experience in our dreams. Is that a scene from Barbie, the movie? That is. This is her dream house village. This is the Barbie dream house <laughs> village. And so I grew up with Barbies. I was a, a, a in the Barbie movie, actually, it's a sleeper meta assassin. It is, you know, it's seen in this kind of like a uh, candy color way and this light and bright and all about Barbie and girls and girl power and feminism, whatever. But it's actually about existentialism. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I was reading that the other day in this article yeah. and I was really surprised in what I was reading because I, 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 I'm not going to lie, I haven't seen it for more than a couple of seconds at a time. <laughs> yeah. And I just sort of assumed that it would be basically only laced with your sort of third wave feminist narratives right. and stuff like that. I, I was really surprised to hear that it did have that sort of deeper side to some of the connotations and some of the yeah, references really in it. I gave it a chance and I was, I was, I actually watched it twice because I was blown away. Uh, one of the things I focus on is um, it, it, the, the wording is very specific, but it talks about how there is a thin membrane separating Barbie land, this dream world from reality, the thinnest of membranes. And that membrane can be fissured, can be fractured, can be can be ripped in a, a tear in, in the thin membrane, just separating our world from theirs. And, you know, in, in a way, dreams are similarly fragile. There's a fragileness to the dreams. There's um, there's a, you know, we'll get into this in, in a minute, but, some, you know, ephemeral nature to dreams, they're here and then they're not. And sometimes you can retain them. And sometimes as soon as you open your eyes, it is as if you know, that entire world just vanishes in, in, in the blink and it's completely gone, even though you were just moments before immersed in, a, in an incredible tableau and inc a whole sensory experience. You know, as soon as you wake up, boom, that dream is just gone. Vapor as if it had never occurred. So vividness, but also followed by, you know, so an incredible um, uh, disillusion. Also, we've got Illogical. There's there's a sense of illogic to dreams. You, you know, it'll take you from one scene to the next with no uh, a really explanation on the connective thread. Uh, we're seeing a lot of illogic in our daily lives these days. Um, I I feel like a lot of the narratives, a lot of the conspiracies, a lot of these stories, uh, they just do not make sense. The plot holes are getting wider and wider and wider. So that's because that's I'd say 70% of them are soils. Yeah. It's really yeah. interesting that you've shown this image, right? Because it, this is by Dali, right? Yes, this it's is painting. the, is the called, Broken Bridge and the Dream. The Broken Bridge and the Dream. This yeah. got referenced with the... Um, the with bridge. the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Are, and are that you, was Are you going to be talking about that tonight at all? You know, really just for this image, just to relate how illogical... And our our current news cycles are the bridge. I, we went over that. I did, we did a whole episode on it in Realize Radio, pointing out all the inconsistencies in the story, pointing out all of the you know the number symbolism, the art symbolism, the 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 names of the the individuals. The, you know, there was one of the crew workers. He was from El Salvador and Salvador Dali with the painting, and it just seemed all of these little. What about this one? What about this one? Check this. I, I, I was going to save this for later, but there was a guy he was interviewed and about the boat and he was the expert on it on it and guess what on he Fox was called News. Clyde Boatwright oh, right. yeah. Cl like, like, Clyde so, yeah so Clyde. Clyde, Clyde but what about the River Clyde one of the yeah. biggest ports as well and get your boat right or get it wrong Clyde Boatwright yeah amazing yeah. It's amazing. And it's the name. There's, uh, that's one thing. There's all these patterns. You know, it's not just the numbers. It's not just the names. It's not just the colors. It's, uh, it's really like everything. It. It's creative. <laughs> They're trying. Yeah, they They're are. Trying. They're really trying. They're trying. They're trying to bake it all in. You know, all the meaning. Everything is in the name. You know, Clyde, Collide Boatwright. That's the entire story. That, he, that man right there, <laughs> that's the entire story right there. It's all baked in. It's it's very it's very vivid. It's all it's it's a very vivid. Have but you seen any of the montages of all of the different um, news reports and the names on the screens that always seem to relate? Like it's there's so um good. there was one in the UK. There was a policeman who was talking about home break-ins and he was called Robin Banks. <laughs> um, what was the fireman? There was a fireman. 
Sorry, the one that I remember what, with the petrol burned, petrol but... shortage. Phil McCann. Yeah, Phil McCann. Phil McCann that, yeah. with a petrol shortage. Yeah. Um, there was a fireman. Something, some... it was something burns. Wasn't yeah, it? something burns. Yeah, yeah Simon saying, Burns yeah, or something just... like it was a fireman, and it was like the, the... I think that was like the Glenfield Towers or something. It was on BBC. Yeah, some bullshit. Yeah, I love I love. It'd be the interesting names. actually to go and look at nine eleven news footage. And see what those people were called, like experts. Oh, or like all eyewitnesses. The historic psyops yeah. would be really interesting all to look it. into. Like the JFK yeah. shooting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Mr. Headfall off or something is going to be talking about the <laughs> Mr. Pumpkinhead with news now. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Headshot. Billy Headshot. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, and there's even a word for this. There's a one of my favorite ones. Um, you know, it's 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 called a, a uranym or an antonym. There's there's a couple of different words to describe. A, a name that is perfectly suited to its owner. And uh, Anthony Weiner is one of my favorite ones. There's a lot of political ones. He's like, he, you know, he was a uh, What about US... Sam, Sam, the guy who got done for Crypto who went to- um, Sam the... Bankman Fried or Bankman ba Freed. Bankman Freed or Bankman yep. Fried, either, either way. way. Like Fried in the electric chair or yep. Freed, yeah. Oh, either God. way, yeah. And Sam Altman, A-L-T, is a computer key. And that's, uh, <laughs> he's, he's the head of, uh, well you know, open AI. Sam Control Alt Delete or something. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, it, someone's taking know, the piss out of us. All of these, all of these um, uh, tech overlords. I don't think they're real individuals. This might be for another another episode, but I think a lot of them are characters, and I think a lot of times these characters have these particularly particularly suited names. It's almost like their entire story is baked in. I like to akin it to um, a, 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 a tiny little acorn. You know, that tiny yeah. little acorn actually does contain the whole mighty oak. Yeah, and that's, yeah. I think, what some of these names are. It contains very the entirety of the story. Very holographic in nature. Like, good examples are Zuckerberg, Sugar Mountain. Right. Um, right. Cor Epstein, Cornerstone. Yeah. And Teen, he has I mean, Teen. This is just in, Rise Above Lingo. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, go, yeah we go on about this all the time. That and and Jizz Lane, Jizz Lane Maxwell, Jizz meaning sex, <laughs> yeah. Lane meaning traffic highway, and she's a sex trafficker. Jizz Lane. It's literally yeah. in her name. Jizz Lane. Oh, I never thought of that one. I That's swear. Good. I swear. They they That's think they're good. so clever. <laughs> they think they're so clever. They are though, aren't they? Let's be honest. Because yeah. they get away with it. I have to. So I have they to are. They it. are I have, to, I have to have some level of respect for the number that they've done on humanity. That's oh, phenomenal. It's they pr make, They even said they can't. They couldn't undo it, even if they wanted to. And I, I you even know, if and the, even if the, the actual social engineers from the. Tavistock Institute, like, from wherever this shit comes from, like their mm -hmm. gentlemen's clubs, whatever, even if they went out on public stage, right, in every country, every nation, and told everyone what they did, they still wouldn't fucking... The demoralisation no, no, is complete, it comrade. Happen. Yeah, it's too it's late. Done. It's irreversible. And, you know, I do wonder if there's a double-edged sword to that irreversibility. You know, on one hand, it can't, it can't be undone, but on the other hand, I think the purpose is... For us I don't to think see it, it can be undone. You know, I think you can see a certain amount of people can see through it. Yes. But you can't, once you're in it, you're like, you're in it. Like It's hard to really, it's hard to really undo it. But you kind of have to go through all the illusion. We talk about this a lot on Realize Radio. I'm actually really thankful for my time on the inside. You know, when I was really, really, really deep down my, the deepest of rabbit holes that I had dug for myself and was happily down inside them. Uh, you know, I, I needed that. I needed that to one day push through. I see a, a pretty much everything differently now. All of the old conspiracies that I used to see one way, I all have, you know, now I just have a, a different lens through which to view them. And I, I don't think if I had, I, I, you know, if I hadn't have been in it, I wouldn't be able to be on the outside now looking at it with gratitude. I, I am appreciative of being in the audience for the magician's trick because I can really, I can, I can really, um, I can really see it for what it is now. You know who's holding the mirrors? Who is holding? You know, sometimes I wonder if they as us on the outside, some of our, our higher our higher beings, our higher selves have sent us here to to remember something. I don't know. Oh, but so, uh, so archaic. <laughs> we do need to get together. One of these days, we'll bookmark that. Well, he, I would, says, yeah. he's, he speculates. He does this is just a thing well, off the top of his head. He thinks I think somebody asked him in a QA. Who, who's in charge of the simulation or whatever. And he says, well, it'd probably be humans. Mm. I'm not, who's on the outside? Yeah, like, because if you think about it, whatever we've got, our cosmos, quote unquote, planets, solar system, all that shit. If that was programmed, it's, that's based on something, isn't it? Yeah. 
Not just that, but we made the game The Sims, and in the game The Sims, you can make your Sims play The Sims. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, yes. there you go. <laughs> yeah. So Rick yeah. and Morty. <laughs> so, so Rick and Morty. Like, uh, that is, be, somebody's it, playing it, us. So yeah. may, maybe, like, I think I everyone that. listening or watching this can quite agree, look, whether it's flat or spherical, whatever, right, what we're seeing up there isn't legit. Yeah, or what, what's fed the to sky. us by the mainstream isn't legit yeah. in some way or whatever. I reckon a lot of people realise that for the first time yeah. last week. Or, or <laughs> was it this week or last week with that yeah. with the eclipse? Because yeah. again, this is one thing I was gonna. We you know we can talk about it now. It doesn't really matter. But, but, but hang on, right? So all, all of what we've got up there and, and, and our you know nature and all of that, it's got to be based on something. So maybe what is actually there is a bit shitter, and mm. they've tweaked it and made it like cool in a simulation in a dream like whatever we're in like but it's yeah. got to be based on something that's real somewhere along the line and you've got yeah. some people trapped in a room with no doors and no windows <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but it's and we'll come do a from somewhere yeah where does where did where did this design come from and you know the because all because all designs are based upon other designs template yeah in in nature mm-hmm Oh yeah, the fractal nature, fractal yeah. nature of universe. Uh, uh, everything kind of breaks down to math in our in our in nature. And then everything man tries patterns. to mimic nature, and then all yeah. our designs are based on other designs. Yeah, it is. It it does. It it kind of the chicken the egg thing, you know. It, that's um. I think we get to, we'll explore that a little bit a little a little bit later too. I do want to talk. Uh, there, I th there is a point where I think the I have a picture of an eclipse, and so that might be a great time to talk about the eclipse. Yeah, yeah, but, sure. Um, I don't want to jump the gun. Everyone getting always more does into... it when I'm doing a presentation. They, <laughs> they, they talk, talk about thing. <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> Carry on. And back to you know the, the hallmarks of dreams and dreaming. Um, we talked about this a little earlier. One of the things that is so remarkable about dreams is the time dilation aspect. What seems in a dream like days, weeks, months, even years, depending on how how we dream, um, when you wake up. It, it, it that extreme dream sequence, the true time that it took in, in our time could have just been a matter of moments. And we can really experience this when we are on snooze, when we hit the snooze button, you're, it's, I think like eight minutes or 13 minutes is the standard snooze time. And you can have a whole dream. I was literally just about you to talk about the snooze button. Ooh, as soon as you start talking about this, I, it made me think of the snooze button immediately. Because mm. I used to be like really, really anal with my snooze button. I, it, would, it would be 10 minutes. Now, for me, the 10 minute snooze is not even worth having. But back then, when I was a bit younger, a 10 minute snooze, like you say, that could be an entire, a whole new an dream, entire right? dream, an entire adventure. It could seem like hours. Uh huh. Yeah. I, and I, I'm, um, I like the snooze button. And I like it for that reason because I like to jump right back into the dream. And I, and, I, I don't know if this is uh, unique to me, but uh, but I, I'm really good about getting right back in it, right back in the same dream, just like that's that, interesting. That same dream, just yeah, just I do that right exact thing. Up. We had a comment from I for an I a minute ago, and they were literally saying, "Why is it you can never get back into the dream that you've come out of and waken up in?" Oh, I've done that loads of times. I think so it's different for everybody. Uh, the problem with the snooze button for me is I sometimes incorporate it into uh, like a game show. So every time, oh. every time it goes off, I have to press the buzzer and answer the question as fast as possible. I don't even wake up. That's <laughs> Just... that's wild. Yeah, the the, the causes problems. Gets into We're your getting eclipse we'll into our family. Rewrite right your dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I it, dreams dreams really do. They are they are fascinating on so many levels. And how how we dream is it, it can be unique, but. Uh, I mean, there are some people that uh, lucid dream every night. I would love to do that. I haven't figured out how to do that quite yet, but that's, uh, it's on my goals. It's on my goals for the year. Um, another element of, so we talked about time dilation, you know, it, goes, it can go rapid or it can go almost hyper slow motion. We, before I go on, we actually do have this in real life as well. Um, our, you know, I think everybody, we've had a big conversation since COVID. There's been a strange realigning of just watch time. that see where the oh vibration <laughs> thank you Lance. since uh <laughs> the thing that shall not be named <laughs> uh it, it time time seems... i mean you can be fun with it <laughs> oh i gotta get it 
I don't. I just. Oh, you're on the spot now. Look. I'm on the spot. I'm on the spot. Well, since 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 that that time, you know, during COVID, it actually felt like time stood still. It actually felt like you were. I mean, I remember. I remember. It felt like I was in an apocalyptic dreamscape walking down yeah, downtown in my city everything the stillness was so eerie the quiet was so eerie it felt like for the year of 2020 almost like the record had stopped on you know the the, the needle had stopped on on the record player it had just gone and it, it was just completely still and uh and then as we've gotten have gotten out of it i feel like a big conversation has been that time is going too fast almost so there is, and, and you know, in times of, um, in times of you know, great, great importance, or even in times of trauma, we can actually ha um, slow down our um, ability to take in time. We actually, we actually can dilate greater, and we almost see in slow motion. We can take in more information per second. It's almost as if our eyes are like a camera, and instead of being in 30 frames per second in standard, we switch during these very specific times to like 60 frames per second, and we take in so much more information. And that's why certain memories, usually traumatic memories, um, you can revisit them in a way that is far more clear and far more interactive than your standard memories they they get they get written and coded in 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 a different way we can re-experience them and almost be in them um, and that's you know PTSD for you know many people not just not just you know soldiers it's always like PTSD for soldiers but there's lots of different fields that have or, or lots of different scenarios that can cause a, a person to have that type of trauma and uh yeah that's kind of an experience of you you can't get out of that time you can't get out of that memory you can't escape the the, the realness and the, the visceralness of of that memory in that time so there's ways that this type of time dilation can happen in our waking life which i actually think is actually another a form of a dream but uh we experience this in in both hey, um, do yes we, do we know how many frames per second the human eye yeah they say <laughs> 24 to 30. 24 to 30. oh right okay yeah because I, I, I wasn't sure because i've I, when i work with video editing i learned about you know frames per second yes 30 is regular digital 24 is more like cinematic but, yep. you know, we're recording now in like 60, maybe 120 frames per second. And I always notice when you record something in 60 frames per second, it actually looks hyper real. Yeah, it has a very odd look until you manipulate the time on your end until then. Then, then, then you slow it down and it look, you know, it has, it has mm. that dream like quality. Slow motion always does have that very dream, really ethereal quality. Uh, and, you know, I love the comparison of the human eye to a camera and even the word dilation time dilation our eyes dilate Dil dilation is something that we experience in, in multiple ways physicality with the, within the body um and you know the eye has a, an aperture it opens and closes just as a as a camera would there's there's um i didn't go into it too much in this presentation but there are so many similarities between how the human eye operates and how recording equipment such as camera cameras analog and digital and video production equipment all of that and even screens and you know the rgb color model our eyes and and digital screens are mirrored in that rgb color model lots a andy very has, andy has a question i think hey andy you? yes i've got my Go hand up sorry um <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought of you the other day i thought of you the other day fuck i screenshot it actually go on oh cool i remember in your presentation you did fuck it. How many? You've done loads. Six, I, I think. Yeah, I think this is my sixth one. I can't remember which one it was. It, w w what number? When you talked about um, the eye and stuff and how it reverses. And Flips it, was, it and so reverses it. it, it, it yeah. Is it Lockheed Martin, their, their yes. logo? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. The signal of Lucifer. If you look if you yeah. look at what the eclipse was allegedly I've got, I've got supposed to right be. You've got it, Lars. I've got it right here. I've got it, it right here. Hit that look, shit. Hit that shit right here. Look, look, look. And I th yeah, here, there it yeah. is. Yeah. And I thought of you immediately yeah. and what you said in that presentation. And then it's all about the fucking eye. Yeah. Look at that. It makes like a perfect eyeball on that, on that earth. That what earth is it cartoon. called? The Alumbra or? The Penumbra. But, the Umbra. But it's the lines yeah. as well. And the, and the geometry yeah, the of, lines, of how yeah. it works is the, yep. is the same 
That's the same as the sigil of Lucifer. Yeah. yeah the diagram the of light the and shadow. Martin symbol and the same as what is the, 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 the model Freemason. of it's how our eye works. symbol as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Lucifer and lucid dreaming. But you think, think about that though. Like, we all know like Lucifer's not actually evil. It just means light bringer. So you right. think about it. Light to your eye. That you're, you're fucking, that's to see. Yeah. So it's not actually, it's like not, not demonic, is it? Like the no. seal of Lucifer. We're actually, we're actually bathing in, yeah, in yeah, Lucifer so at the moment. We're in, with it, we're in, without we're in it, the light spectrum. Yeah. Wouldn't you? We exist within light. Lucifer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like, it's not demonic to say, to say that. And maybe these dark occult organizations, corporations who use that shit, like Lockheed Martin, that like maybe they're just a bit thankful that there's light. Did it's you like, dark. by the way, the, um, yeah, the beautiful swirling magenta theme that I've come up with? I love it. So. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. And and even on the eclipse, there was like a little bit of a magenta. There's all these like magenta things coming off of the eclipse. So I, there's magenta's been, magenta's been front and center for me a lot lately. You, you put you put magenta on the map. I see loads of people talking about it now. Before we came across you, that was your, that was your first presentation. Um, I think now, so. If you yeah. look at the news and shit like that, and like news articles and stuff like that, they, they stick magenta in there. Like yeah, where yeah, there should have been magenta. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's always a girl. There's always a little girl wearing a pink shirt, or if there's someone like front and center just wearing a pink pants or something. Or, or it just it it just it works its way in. And you know we've talked about this before, but I think that I think ultimately this whole place is here to. I used to say I used to say this place was here to wake us up. Like we're here to wake up, but. Uh, I, I get to this a little later in the presentation, but I just want to shout him out now. Les Luther, I had a conversation with him recently. He's a, a, a longtime friend of the show on Realize Radio. He's an excellent, he's an excellent uh, investigator of the truth. Um, he's the one who actually went to Ukraine and showed that there was nothing going on in Ukraine when the war was just getting started. And he's really big into war as theater. Um, but we had a conversation about dreams and dreaming and about waking up and awakening and this whole, you know, wake people up, truth or movement. And he gave me an excellent reminder um, that perhaps we're not here to wake up or to wake anybody else up. Perhaps we're here to become better dreamers, to realize that we are in a dreamlike state, a dreamlike world, and become lucid in this, become truly lucid in what we understand to be this life. And... Uh, and render as we go, create the world around us that we desire to be in. And I've seen little glimmers of this in my life as I've been doing this exploration, as I've been seeing the world in this way. It does seem that there is some sort of control mechanism that we can impart on this place. And, and that's also a hallmark of lucid dreaming. We'll get into this a little bit later. But in lucid dreaming, once you become aware, there's, a, there's an ability to, to control and to to create the dream around you, uh, to to do in the dream whatever you'd like to do, and um, and I think that that's I think that that's also true here in this world. We just have to become aware of it, and we have to learn how to how to do it. Let's see. Okay, moving on to Let's get back to the okay. Oh yes, dream amnesia. Dream amnesia. So this is um this is Van Gogh's Forget Me Nots. I think art is always kind of telling us something about our lives and famous art uh, even more so. And um you know it, dreams are so interesting because it, there's only a few dreams in my life that I can truly 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 remember. Some of those are recurring dreams. Uh, some of those were nightmares from when I was a kid. I still can I mean every frame of that nightmare I remember there's a couple of those from when I was a kid that that to this day remain in their full fidelity in my brain and oh I wish they would go away but they won't but um most of them just kind of evaporate the second I open my eyes the second I move my head they just go bloop and I heard a theory I couldn't find anything of substance to put into this presentation but I still think it's worthy of an investigation maybe someone out there will take it and run with it but um the idea th there's an idea that that there's a bunch of like liquid all through your brain and this and you know the liquid in your spinal fluid your cerebral spinal fluid um that that is what delivers your dreams, that your dreams are actually contained in this, this brain juice. <laughs> and the reason that they disappear so quickly upon waking is because you move your head. And in moving your head, you actually disrupt that, that dream, that dream juice. And it 
shakes up and it goes away. So that that could be something, you know, if you are if you're struggling with remembering your dreams, maybe just really 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 try to be still upon waking if you can, if you have that presence of mind and see if that does anything to help your your retention yeah, it's very of your interesting. dreams. You just said that about moving your head because that that's true with uh the spirit molecule with DMT when you're in the DMT dream state, one slight move of the head can literally make the whole thing shift into something else really so that, yeah so what you just wow. said that would make on, on a phys, on a physics level was good because it's accessing the exactly the same mechanisms in your brain when you dream so that, yeah. would, that would make perfect sense oh i love it i love it you know and there's so much about our spine and the 33 vertebrae and all that stuff and, and you know what what we are if you look at our spinal column you know it's just housing that incredible electrical wiring that that makes us humans and you know it, we're really just, you know, these tr trash bags full of blood uh, that, ha you know, that are housing electrical wiring. Meat we're, sacks. you know, <laughs> yeah, meat, meat puppets. Yeah, it's, uh, it is pretty incredible to, to, to comprehend how electric we are and how, the, you know, our, everything is sensory. Every, everything that we uh, think is happening in, in reality truly is just um, a, a processing function of our, of our, of our sensory input um truly I, I believe we're kind of living in a vr world already and our skin is already a haptic suit our eyes are already vr goggles the our binocular system that what the diagram of the loose for light and shadow is the same diagram that uh, how our eyes take in light um and process images it's very 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 interesting um but this is also interesting you guys know i love words that's one of the things i love taking um taking words apart and seeing where they fit in my brain. And I, you know, there's a, a, the Egyptian Arabic word for human actually comes from the word to forget. Why? I, I, I heard that on a, po a random podcast years ago and insane. It, it was just so close to insane, which, you know, many of us might've been accused of being, uh, in, insane or, or worse with these types of explorations. But I, you know, I think that there's something kind of magical about thinking differently and, um, being considered crazy amongst your community. I've been there. Um, but yeah, the, the, the fact that humans are here to, uh, ultimately we are forgetting where we are, I, I think, I, you know, I think that there is something maybe perhaps with past lives. I personally don't think I ever had a past life, but I do believe people who have stories of their past lives, you know, the idea is like you kind of forget, you you choose to come here and you forget. And some people don't forget well enough and they remember some little tidbits. And also with deja vu, some people have theorized that deja vu is is um, like little glimpses and, re, and uh, remembrances of, of a previous time doing this exact same thing. Maybe we we keep doing this on a loop and try to get it right. Uh, again, we don't necessarily know, but I did find that that to be interesting. Also, um, in scan Sanskrit, um, uh, bodhi, the word bodhi, B-O-D-H-I, means enlightenment and light, um, which is interesting because it sounds like body and the human body and hu human, hu, H-U-E, human, you know, hu means light. And so it's like, you know, we are. So is that part of the word like bodhivista? I'm not sure what that, I'm not sure. It which could is, be. Which, which, which is like, that goes to be like the Buddha. It is in Buddhism. Yep. Bodhi is a term in both Sanskrit and Pali, meaning perfect wisdom or enlightenment. B-O-D-H-I. Hmm. Yeah. There's some, there's some things there. And then, you know, again, with light and forgetting, we've, We've been shown, we've been shown guys that there is some sort of relationship between bright white light and erasure, erasure. However, however contrary to that, yes, it can be used to recover memory as well. Oh, that is interesting. I'm going to go on to the next slide so nobody gets a stroke, One but of my uh, favorite characters, tell me more about Lecter. that. Yeah. He's renowned for using. Uh, light therapy to hypnotize or you know just fuck with people's mind mm -hmm. so you can, you can do with a lot of stuff you can pluck stuff out that yeah or, or, or insert stuff. or insert stuff it could be yeah, that's so interesting i i took these slides out now i wish i hadn't but there was some research on um on alzheimer's being um kind of blasted with 40 hertz mediums uh 40 i think it was i think it was sound 
um, but 40 hertz can also be communicated in in, in light. Um, but that 40 hertz uh, uh, input actually helped them regain, help these Alzheimer's patients regain memory. And so I think that there could be something with whether it's sound input or light input that actually can heal us, that can I, I think everything's kind of a double-edged sword, you know, and 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 used in the right way. Um, you know, Tylenol can help you, but also you take one too many and you're dead. It's, there's lots of for everything that, that there's. Uh, it's um it's 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 the amount and and the type and the the manner and the fashion in which you take it in. And uh, yeah, I could totally see light being for memory um, rebuilding, perhaps. We've got an excellent yeah. comment here from Shiva Shampoo, who's also an excellent content creator. Um, the name of the tree that Gautama Buddha meditated in front of when he became enlightened is called the Bodhi tree. Oh, oh, that's perfect. I'm, I bet that's that's why it it gleaned from from that name. Thanks for that. Shiva. I love that. That's beautiful. Um, okay, and you know we we talked about bright, bright light and that and its role in forgetting, but also the, in the word lucid, and this connects back to, again, with the sigil of Lucifer and L-U-C, that meaning light. Um, lucid does not just mean, you know, the, a dream state where you understand that you're awake. Lucid also means bright or, or luminous. And we'll explore that a little later, but, um, Back to movies representing what we may or may not understand about dream states. Uh, I think Inception might be on the top of most people's list as far as movies about dreams. It's it, it's kind of the the canon of of it, it's in it's in the it's in the history books when it comes to movies about dreams and manipulating dreams and becoming. Uh, a, a controller I of felt your. This movie was unnecessarily complicated. <laughs> it really was. It really was. Like you could have got the deal without all the excess. Well, I think it, like all it, the streets folding in on itself. I was just about to say oh, the streets great. folding in. I enjoyed in. that. But you know, there was like it, it was it was very elaborate. It was a little unnecessarily elaborate. Uh, I I thought it was a great, I, you know, it, it, I think it was the first of its kind in seeing dreams in this way, the dream within a dream within a dream within a dream and your ability to um, take control and be aware and how, I, I think one of, one of the things that it did really well too was show the, as you get deeper into the dream world, the time element gets stranger and stranger and more, more protracted and you could theoretically be locked in a dream state believing it's years a, a lifetime even when it's really just been 20 minutes of actual dreaming and you know when we think about this life that you know we could just be in on the outside potentially we could just be taking a 20 minute nap that's and this so whole okay. thing we call I'm, life. I'm going to bring it back again to to DMT and the spirit molecule. We did a plant medicine round table a little while ago, and I played this interview of this guy called Patricio Dominguez, who was a, he was a very experienced shaman. And then he went to Dr. Rick Strassman's clinical DMT trials where they give you the flood dose. Ooh. Long story short, he took it, the flood dose, intravenously, and he had what he described as a thousand-year trip. And, and and he was so serious that he literally had this this experience in another dimension with the creator for a thousand years that when he came back he found it really difficult to carry on and he described himself as a thousand and fifty six years old. Wow. He said I, I can't describe it any other way. I, that's how old I am now. Mm. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that could be a little bit more than you bargained for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine being trapped in that and just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and then waking up and being like, "Whoa!" Well, he, he was obviously for the for the after the first maybe uh, two hundred fifty years. He was he was already he was already absolutely convinced that he was dead. You know, there's no way he thought he was ever going back. Uh, oh so he God. said he's very surprised when it, when it happens. Yeah. I think, yeah, I've, ne I've, I'm, I'm open to it, but I've never tried anything beyond, um, I've done mushrooms as a psychedelic, but I, I've, I've never tried DMT, uh, or ayahuasca. I, I you know, I, I'm open to it. It just hasn't presented itself in a, a way that, uh, but one day, one day I'm going to take those, those big doses and, oh boy, watch out, watch out for it's the presentations after those. From, not too far away from psilocybin. I've heard it's, it's, it's just 
a diff, a diff, a very similar in some ways, but very, very, very different DMT yeah, in other say, ways. You could say that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I am open to it. I'm open to it when the time is ready. Um, okay. On this, I have, a, I have a weird theory that every single one of Leonardo DiCaprio's movies are a continuation of the same world. It's dreams within a dreams within a dreams within a dreams. And the movies are part of that as well. And so he's standing right here. He's standing on the staircase. In Inception, this is uh, the opening of the movie. It, he awakes, awakens on a beach, and it's this just beautiful Japanese villa, and he enters into it. And something that I noticed about this particular setting is that it's weirdly reminding me of something else that I have a, an extreme fascination on, which is to Titanic. So it's 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 a little interesting, you know, and this is a this is a very particular type of staircase. This is called a T-shaped staircase. You can see that the two side door, he, there's one staircase going up. Now he's on the landing and on both sides there's two flanking stairs leading up to another landing. And whoops, and that is exactly exactly what we've got we've got there. We've got two T-shaped staircase, a landing and two stairs flanking flanking up. So I think that there is something interesting about uh, about Titanic as a movie, and also it was described to us as the ship of dreams, the ship of dreams. And you know, I think um, I think dreams. Uh, you know, also uh, okay. So the ship of dreams. This goes. There's so many things that I could. I mean, I love Titanic and the the, the Titan and all that stuff. Oh boy, we're not going to get back into that, but. I have been thinking a lot lately as the human body as a vessel, as a seafaring vessel, like a ship. We are navigators of our own ship. I don't necessarily know how that translates. Are we in water? Are we in some sort of uh, uh, interdimensional realm ship uh, tr trying to travel through? But I do think that there is something about these bodily containers that is more – more of a vessel, more uh, true, like a, like, um, like a, yeah, like a, like a ship. So I, I, that's through the three dimensional peasant soup. Yeah. Kind of, kind, you know, get there's, there, there really is something about it. And there's also, you know, a very simple children's nursery rhyme or the, the song in the round, the one of the most famous song in the rounds and it's row, row, row your boat gently down the stream, merrily, 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 merrily life is but a dream. And I think, with some of these children's stories, fairy tales, bedtime stories, lullabies, I think they're very, very simple, but I think there's deep truths baked in. Because what would be, that's just the simplest way in the most clever way to sneak it in is just put it in something that nobody would ever consider to be intellectual, you know, or or truth telling these simple little children's um, songs, row, row, row your boat. And I wrote row, row, row in three different ways because they all, I do think that there's an exploration within that. I think that they're using the word row multiple times to tell us something. Row is uh, a Greek, um, a Greek letter. And it also is used in physics to represent density. And I've, I, this is kind of a, a kind of a tangent, but I've been very, very, very uh, skeptical of gravity, of what gravity is and gravity, how, the, the force of gravity and how it's described in, on Earth. And I think that what we experience as gravity is something more akin to um, a, a relationship of buoyancy and density and, 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 and medium. Uh, I, and so there, there's, there's something there's something there, and row being a, a representation of, of density, I think um, that could be maybe a, a little clue there. Um, but also with the with the other one, with the row R O E, uh, that means egg, it means fish egg. But uh, Rambo, my co-host of Realize Radio, uh, maybe about six months ago, he introduced a new theory to the class, and it just blew our minds. And it was something called the egg theory. And we have just been kicking around it ever since. And it's kind of this idea that we are in some sort of cosmic egg waiting to be hatched and we are all one and we are, are all deeply, deeply, deeply connected. And I, I believe all of that. I, 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 you know, I don't know where this, where this egg is or where this egg is going to hatch or if it's really looking like a physical egg in, in some way, but I do I do think that there is something to a great oneness uh, and a great interconnectivity of 
us here, you know, of all of us streamers here together. I think um, it's really interesting. If this RHO row represents density, like I've never heard of that before. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hadn't. I hadn't seen it in the marine industry. We talk about density all the time. What's the row of a boat? RHO. Isn't that interesting with the row and the row? Mm. And I love when words mean. In the same sounding word, you know, means all sorts of different things. I love to dig in. I think they tell us a lot with these with these words. And and the gravity element. This is something that Inception uh, explored, and tr- you know, they did an interesting job. at this was this one of the more famous scenes when they're running through. They're trying to get out of one dream and into the next dream world, and um, the world's kind of collapsing in on itself, and the 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 scene is turning, and the gravity is not affecting them in the way that normal typical gravity would um and i i think that i think it's kind of interesting uh the idea of gravity is also explored within lucid dreaming and there have been studies the when you dream about flying which has happened to me maybe once or twice in my life that's really the only time that gravity has kind of disappeared in in the dream where i'm able to just I fly really for lack of a better term. Um, there's a there's a particular frequency that has been observed in these states of lucidity and gravity dreaming is correlated with lucid dream and it usually has to do with gamma waves in our brain. Gamma waves, which I want to come back to. I want to come back to gamma so waves. This is the only lucid oh, dream that I get is the flying one, and I'm not really flapping, yeah, literally the only one that I get. You're just like soaring. And it's, and it's, yeah. But it's not, yeah. I'm not flapping my arms up and down or anything. Yeah. I just uh, <clears throat> sort of feel like energy build up underneath me. Yeah. And I just sort of just fly. Like it's, yeah. I can levitate for a bit and then but just kind of feel the energy build up and then zip on out of the room. And as soon as I realize I'm in that dream, that's when I can start doing tricks and stuff. It's really fun. I love that. <laughs> so that, so the, what, what that fl- slide is saying, there's a direct link with people that have this it's called gravity dreaming dreaming of flying and and being able to lucid dream yes they're saying that that's one of the hallmarks um if you one of the one of the things that lucid dreamers can can learn to do is is fly if fly in a dream and it really is i've only done it well i've only had two dreams where i was flying i've had a couple of breathing underwater dreams which is very cool as well but I literally um, had one last night what a breathing <laughs> like, underwater dream? oh yeah. my gosh you're um, a good dreamer you're a yeah. great um, sometimes it's terrible but yeah <laughs> i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna beat you right because i grew up around water all the time there was always a lake or the sea on the other side of my road but pretty much um so very early on i had to get over dreams while i fell in the water i've been able to breathe underwater consistently since i was a little kid in dreams so if Isn't i fall in i just i just that if i fall into water that actually triggers my lucid dreaming and i go oh i don't need to worry and then i just breathe underwater yeah. So, yeah, it's it's it's, it's very interesting. The and isn't it like the clearest up. breath? It's like so clear. It's like the 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 oxygen is just going straight into your lungs. There's no resistance. It's like the biggest clearest breaths you've ever taken. Once you realize you can breathe underwater in your dream. Yeah, yeah. It's strange that. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I've had that sensation on mush. So I've had that breathing underwater and the the clear full breaths. That's that's a feeling that I remember. And then I've had that clear full breath sensation. That's how I kind of know that I'm tripping. On um, um, I haven't had too many psychedelic experiences on mushrooms, but the few that I have, the the the, the breath is just like so clear. And I I'm I'm like man, I'm dreaming now. Like this is this, this is this is what happens to me in dreams. Is this clear big breath sensation? Um, yeah. So I don't know. I think maybe sometimes mushrooms uh, clue us in on the dream state, the dream, the 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 uh, fluidity of this this thing we call life, rowing our boat down the down the stream of life. Um, yeah. So there's there's a lot. Uh, so in, with with Inception, you mentioned that the folding the folding in on itself. Yeah. These, so these dream spaces they can become kind of unpredictable as well, uh, and that you know I I don't. I don't really have I don't really have um, dreams that I don't really have nightmares anymore. Thank goodness that was more of a, a more of a, a kid thing to me. But the unpredictability of dreams is something that is uh, is unexplained. It's, it goes back to the illogic. Like all of a sudden you're just in a totally new space and it's not explained in the dream and you're just like, oh okay, you know you don't, you don't but you don't think of it as odd. You just kind of well, you, go, somebody just commented saying maybe that's Lance's superpower, the breathing underwater thing. And obviously that's his sort of signal 
the, you, you know, your superpowers kicked in, you're in control yeah. now. Like, that's exactly the same for mine. As soon as I, I start flying, I'm like, oh, oh, this is me. I can do this now. Like, it's, that's yeah. the trigger for the lucid part. Well, well Shiva, like Shiva commented exactly the same. Exactly the same thing that he, 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 it was the trigger for him to realise he was lucid dream as well. So there's obviously a, quite it's a common theme. Level of control that you realise that you've got. You've got yeah. some kind of control over your situation. You've got some kind of superpower. And then, and then that's yeah. the trigger like, oh, I can do whatever I want now. Exactly. Instead of just being, exactly. in, being in a movie and you're not being yeah. able to interact with any other characters right. properly. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's like that trigger, isn't it? And I, that's think, a I think life is, is, I think we can look at life this way. I think that, you know, sometimes, I, I actually think that modern life is set up to make us feel very powerless and insignificant that, you know, we're just the tiny little speck of dust in the grand universe. And, you know, we're just one of a, a gazillion people on the planet. The number keeps changing. We're just, we're so inconsequential. We have no power. We have, we have no agency. We, uh, we really matter not. I think all of that is just to keep us from ever truly comprehending how powerful we are and how interconnected we are and how much how much we can affect this place, how much we do affect this place, how much we create this place around us and how much we influence this realm versus being influenced by this realm. I think that, uh, I think we really do. And I, I, and I want to learn how to be a better dreamer. And I, I, I believe I'm in a waking dream state and I'm in a, a hyper lucid dream and I want to, uh, and I think I am doing that. I think I am in certain activities that I've been doing and ways that I'm going about my life, I, things just work have been working out in in a way that feels magical, that feels uh, hi, a higher order. But I I do think that I'm I'm doing that. I'm I'm making I'm making those because I am now aware and because I'm thinking in this way. I'm I'm gaining that control that we know we can do in the lucid dream. But I'm doing that here. So it's 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 been it's been interesting. It's been interesting. Um, on the next slide, I included the uh, the City of Lights, the Eiffel Tower, you know, talking about lights and lucidity and um, something that me and the Realize Radio crew have recently done. We had a group Zoom chat not long ago. And at the end of the group Zoom chat, we talked a lot about lucid dreaming and we hatched up a plan to all meet. We're going to meet in a dream at some point. We've all got to – we've I don't know when it's going to happen, but we're all meditating on it and we're planning for it. And every night I think about this, but we picked a spot and we're going to meet at the Eiffel Tower and we're going to try to do a collaborative collective dream. I don't know if that's possible, but I, you know, this, this world is a very interesting and surprising place when you, when you let it, when you let it surprise you and you let it, you know, when you let your curiosity run. So we'll see. But, uh, and also shout out again, Les Luther. Um, he recently posted something that just really blew my mind. I, th I think them choosing Paris to be the scene of the dreams or a lot of the dreamscapes, uh, art, the architectural dreamscapes um, in Inception was very purposeful uh, because, you know, it is it is the city of lights and the, the Eiffel Tower is one of the, 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 the greatest light uh, shows in Paris. But also Paris is known for their opera. And Les Luther recently tweeted something about how the word opera is is basically op era as, you know, psyop era. We're kind of living in all of these things, all of these psyops, they're, they're essentially theater. They're forms of theatrical displays. And I, I he worded it a lot better. I recommend anybody. A psyopera. You know, a psyopera. Yeah. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Yeah. So there's, there's, there's lots there. I, I, um, I, I love, I think Paris is a beautiful city. I've been there one time and I would love to go back. I, I was going to go back on my trip when I was in London. I was going to take a train to, to Paris. I ended up, I ended up just running myself into the ground health wise. I did too. I, I burned, burned by a candle at both ends and I, I needed to retreat and, and uh, I had to go home and, and recover because I got sick. So uh, that was un unfortunate, but um, okay. To, on to, we talked about, we talked about the gamma um, element of the brain when we are dreaming, that is a heightened perception and integration state that they have found. But there's lots of different states that you can be in when you're dreaming. We have gamma, we have beta, alpha, theta, delta. Delta is your deep and dreamless 
sleep. That's actually a pop out from Westworld. Um, they often say to the hosts, may you, may you rest in a deep and dreamless slumber. That's, that's something that, that Dr. Ford says when he's putting his hosts to sleep or the tech say when they're putting their hosts to sleep or paused for uh, a moment for whatever time they say, uh, may you rest in a deep and dreamless slumber. But there's something about the gamma, the beta, the alpha, the theta. What are all these? These are all Greek letters of the alphabet. Um, I actually know all the Greek letters of the alphabet. I'm going to see if I, let's see, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, theta, eta, zeta, iota, kappa, lambda, mu, nu, psi, omicron, pi, rho, sigma, tau, upsilon, phi, chi, psi, omega. Okay. I still know it. I had to learn that in the fifth grade. I still, and I still know, know it. Why? I still know it. And here's, here's the full list. Um, and what's interesting about this list is these actually may be more familiar to us than we realize. These alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and epsilon, these were all what strains of a particular oh wow yeah. something that we cannot name yeah covades or whatever we're calling it um yeah we oh, during the omicron omicron's there what else have we yep, got yep omicron i didn't highlight that one but yeah omicron is on there too they really dipped in to uh the greek lettering for a certain phase of the, the variants, as they were calling it, the variants. COVID, that's what I need to say. I need to call yeah, it COVID. Yeah, the COVID union. Yeah, yeah the COVID union, anti, anti COVID. That's, that's right. That's what I need to say. Um, <laughs> and uh, I thought that I thought this was kind of interesting. There is something, we'll get more into uh, the Greek element. And again, I love words and the detection of words and a lot of the etymology and stuff. A lot of the roots always goes to Greek. So we're going to kind of earmark the Greek letters because they re they resurface later. But, you know, with the uh, anti-COVID, well, whatever, <laughs> and with, with, I'm not having a hard time. With all of that, um, you know, early in uh, 2020, that's when I started, that's, that's really when I started human vibration. I started just before COVID hit. I started in January of 2020 and the world's shut down in March. So um, while I was awakening on my end to all sorts of um, psyops, psyoperas uh, playing out, um, the biggest psyopera of all uh, unfolded before my very eyes. And um, and I, I, and I just felt that there was something bigger about, about Corona, cor you know, meaning ring of light. Corona has lots of different um, connotations, not just with the naming of the novel coronavirus, and also novel meaning fiction, which is so wonderful. <laughs> yeah. um, but the, you know, the corona, the meaning ring of light around the sun, we all saw the corona with the eclipse uh, that just that just happened. Um, and corona is also in, in art, a corona, it means ring of light. And it's usually shown in a lot of religious art um, for a, a literal ring of light around a head of an enlightened one. And it means so corona means means ring of light. It, 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 and corona also means crown. As in the crown of our head, we have a corona on our head, and it is the crown of our head. And I, I have, I had a feeling then, and I continue to have a feeling now that corona had nothing to do with contagion or disease in our body system. It was just more about a spreading awareness uh, 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 in, our, in our minds. It was more about, um, I think that the uh, awakening, um, the realization that we are seeing uh, build and build and build and build and build, and build um, among more and more and more, um, just understanding the fakery is just exactly that. I think that this is kind of an ine inevitability. I think that this, we were always going to get here and um, the system rings bells, alarm bells at a certain point and has to has to declare when things maybe have been breached. And I think that coronavirus, coronavirus was potentially just ringing the alarm bell that the um that the awareness was was going to be taking place do you want to and know a really interesting fact i would love to the eclipse on the 8th of april 2024 and the eclipse i forget the date in 2017 mm. the exact mid date let me just get it here what am i talking about i've got the meme with all the details hold on this is mental auntie Coviet brought this to our attention the exact wow. mid-date is December 14th, 2020. Now, people in the UK were going, what, what's that date about? Now, this is the date in America where the very first Britney Spears was uh, injected into a 
into a Kovia peasant. What? Um, That's and guess crazy. What? If you break down the amount of time in between these two periods here, it goes to three years, three months, three weeks, and three days. That's insane. So I guess if you add those all together, you get a load of six, six, sixes as well. <gasps> yeah. And these breakdowns, guys, the like it's <laughs> the numbers. <laughs> and, and I saw Ante Kobe also posted about the queen dying 911 days after the world shut down. What are the odds? Uh, I mean, what are the odds? There, the, the, the dates, I don't really do um, the numbers or the, like the gematria, gematria. I don't really do that or the date duration in between because I, I, I'm I more on the words. That's just how my brain works. But whenever I do see these incredible duration syncs, it's, I, I may not be the one who's, who's, who's seeking those out, but when I do see them, they blow me away. I, I just see it as, as proof, it may not be the right word, but I see it as more further and in, deeper indication that there is a higher order script happening. That's something, yeah. it's not human. It's not, des, it's not on our level of design. It's something above us and in, beyond us in some way. And the precision is just too perfect. The order, in, in the word script, we talk about scripted reality, the word script and actually in computing, in computer language, a script means auto-executing computer code. And I do feel like a lot of these things are just, it's just code. It's just it's auto-executing. The, the numbers, boom. The, the colors, boom. The names, boom. It's just so perfect. And the way it rolls out, it, the precision, there's a precision element of all of these things with everything baked in that um, it's, I find it really hard to quantify. And I think that there has to be some sort of outside design, outside um, order happening yeah it's far too it's far too um what's the word it's like laced into everything so deeply it, it can't yeah. it can't just be the elite families and the freemasons doing it it's more like they're sort of documenting it and trying to ride it the, this this uh, yeah. this code is cu is coming from somewhere somewhere else i think yeah 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 and I see a couple of archaic shout outs. We really got to, he's, he, I, I'm sure he's been on all this as well. We've got, we got to do a, a co, a collab eventually. Cause he's, he's, he's from Texas. He's another Texas guy. So something yes. about, something about Texas. Um, okay. Back to, back to, um, the lucid nature. We talked about the lucidity as light. Um, and then just, you know, the, the state of, of feeling awake, being aware of dreaming, um, and whenever we think of dreams, you know, one, we talked about this a little earlier, but there are dreams and then there are, there are nightmares. And so I think that there is something, um, we're gonna, and again, COVID, uh, uh, COVID, uh, uh, <laughs> whatever it was, that was often described as a collective nightmare. When will this nightmare end? There was a lot of language about COVID being a nightmare and then connecting with the dream states, those, 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 all those different, um, the Greek letters that we originally went with gamma meaning, you know, hi hyper dream state and delta meaning no, no dreams, but still just a, a deep slumber. There is something connected about COVID and dreaming. And this was kind of when there was a lot of conversation about people being asleep or awake, the NPCs wearing three masks, you know, the, there was, there was a, I feel like there was a lot of conversation around COVID in the conspiracy communities and in the truther communities about waking and sleep. And the people that believed in it were considered asleep and the people that were questioning it were considered awake. And so just even that connection within our circles and the conversations that we're having, these words, these words mean something. Um, and again, for, uh, back to the Greek, um, back to the Greek Morpheus, the name Morpheus, again, this ties in with the matrix, but Morpheus is the Greek god of dreams and nightmares. And we're back to Morpheus. One of those quotes and the matrix um, was asking, you know, have you ever had a dream, Neo, that you were so sure was real? What if you were unable to wake from that dream? How would you know the difference between the dream world and the real world? And I think that last question, that last query is really where I am. I, I, uh, you know, when I have hyper lucid dreams, when I have what I consider to be, you know, a lucid dream state and I'm, I'm touching the wall and it feels like wall and I'm touching the table and it feels like table. And 
I can feel my breath and I can feel my, I can feel my face and I can, you know, and everything just feels so real. The, all the measurements that I have when I'm in a real world, you know, the table feels like table, the wall feels like wall. How, how, how do I know that this isn't a dream? If I can, if I can produce this, if I can experience this, all the sensory inputs that I use as my measurement tool to see if I'm awake or not, if I can experience all of these awakened uh, sensations, if I can feel that in a dream, how do I know this isn't a dream? Truly, how it, I've already proven that I can do this inside a dream. How am I so sure that this is not the dream? I'm I'm personally not. I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, there was another connection between dreaming and um, the matrix. So when I look at the etymology of dream, and we'll go deeper into the etymology of the word itself. Um, but I kind of I realized that dream is an anagram for madre, and madre is Spanish for mother. And this is kind of interesting. The uh, word matrix actually comes from the word mother. So there's, you know, it's it's loose. It's a, it's a little bit of a stretch, but I'm I'm known for stretching a bit. Uh, but we go, we get dream, madre, mother, matrix. And I just thought that was another, not that we need any more uh, connections between the movie and the word, but that was a little one for me. I I uh, I, I do find it interesting that. Um, the word matrix comes from uh, the word for womb. And even uh, the womb, um, the Latin matrix, the, the word for womb is also dam, D-A-M, which is back to water and the breaking of water when you give birth. And uh, there's just, just tons of tons of language around that. But I do think that there's, and back to, back to the, the fluid that creates our dreams, perhaps, in our in our brains, um, There there's something there. There's something to be connected and to be discovered there. Also in the matrix, this is one book that is featured in the matrix. I have my copy right here. It's John Baldriard's Simulacra in Simulation. And in this book, Neo, uh, he hides some of his, his valuables inside that book. When he opens it up, you can see that there's um, some pages carved out and he has it as a secret stash. Um, but this is, you know, it just taking this author and he, in this book, it's really all about the subject subjective nature of reality. It's, it, we're all experiencing this world individually. We all have our own, and we all have our own takeaways from, from every experience that we have, our own interpretations of the world around us. We're all kind of living in our own little bubble, experiencing this world through our own lens. And my world experience will be vastly different than someone else's. Even, even people that are close to me, even, you know, in, in my family, our memories of certain events are completely different. Same event, same people present, but every single person has a completely different uh, remembrance of that event. And so we really are kind of walking around with our own individual constructs and our own interpretations of the world around us based on, you know, basically simulate, you know, our own, our own experiences um, and, and how those represent in our lives and how we react to them. But dreams are very similar. Dreams also are that subjective reality that is constructed completely in the mind. And, um, you know, same thing. We experience our sensations. We experience our full range of emotions and the events feel very real. Everything feels real. I can't express that, that, that enough. You know, there's a, an unreality to the dream state, but the, the physical sensations uh, are, are, are just as, as true and, and, and have just as much fidelity um, as the sensations that we're experiencing while we're awake. So that's just a little, little, little Easter egg inside, um, inside that, that movie. Um, Westworld does also an incredible, uh, exploration. This is the pilot episode, literally the first scene of the show Westworld. And I'm a big proponent of, if you've never seen Westworld, just get your hands on the pilot season one, episode one. It's, the entire show. It's it's the mighty oak inside the acorn. All the all the things you need to know about the show are baked the into first this season pilot. Is, is very special. West Westworld. I, I remember coming back from a, a long trip in Asia that was also very special and very enlightening and, and 
we sort of finished the season of Westworld and the way it ended, and I saw everything in it. I saw the story of Enki and, and Leo, the two brothers, fighting over mankind, whether to give them consciousness or not. Mm. Um, you know, the maze, all, all and it, it, it's very, very good. Um, you know, the other seasons after that, they just carry on with the story. But, um, <laughs> they get worse and worse and worse, don't they? Yeah, so the, you only need yeah. to watch the first season, but I do recommend it. It's, it's great. It's, um, yeah, it's great viewing. Yes, I, I, I've had multiple guests on uh, on Realize Radio to talk specifically about Westworld. We've done multiple episodes on interpreting Westworld, um, and I don't. I mean, I, I I would con I will continue to have you know to to talk about it because I think that there is so much um, within this within this show that shows us again about our our lives and about how this place operates and. Um, because we see it in a show or because we see it in a movie, we just assume that it's that it's over there and it has no real bearing on this place. But uh, there's something there's something very deep to all of it. Um, back to the word for dream, um, and this connects deeply to Westworld. Um, the, one of the roots is from German traum, T R A U N M, which looks a lot like trauma, right? Which which is, uh, and I mean, you can't really think of a, a more built-in trauma than what the those hosts go through in Westworld. And there's one host in particular in Westworld, and not giving a spoiler alert if you're super sensitive to it, but this is, this is a very light spoiler. But um, there's a character named Maeve, and she has these very traumatic flashbacks. She becomes very rattled, unsettled by these, these constant flashbacks that she's getting in there. They're increasingly... The things that she sees that is being done to her, it's very traumatic. And those trauma flashbacks actually serve to awaken her. They, they, yeah. they, it does something to her. And, and she re almost requires that trauma in order to awaken. This kind of goes back to, you know, I, I'm so thankful I was in the, the illusion and I'm so thankful I was tricked. I needed that to one day see it from the other side and to have a different perspective on it and to awaken and, you know, to use that language. But, um, okay. So trauma, and then also dream actually comes from the word joy in, in music. So uh, we're going to focus on both of those things, joy and music. Um, one of the, one of a really direct, uh, sync with Westworld, of course, in the word joy is the creator, Lisa Joy and Jonathan Nolan. Lisa Joy, Jonathan Nolan. These are the creators of, of these Westworld. are the creators of Westworld, and they're they're married. They're a dynamic duo. Jonathan Nolan is the brother of Christopher Nolan. He is responsible for Inception. Uh, he's responsible for Memento, an excellent movie on on memory. That is, um, yeah, yeah, such Memento. a good movie. Actually, Jonah, uh, Jonathan Nolan wrote the original screenplay that was adapted by his brother um so there's there's some double you know he, when he's... i did my degree in media studies on the cine cinematography module memento was right at the top of the record well it was sort of like not recommended you, you had to watch it and write something about it to uh what yeah, was your takeaway um well, yeah, I mean, it was obviously completely disorientating. Mm. It was more to do with like the structure. We were like supposed to comment on this uh, to, with to do the structure and the mise en scène, the way it was shot and stuff like yeah. that. Out of order, yeah, it was all out of yeah. order, which is very a very um, daring way to do filmmaking. You know, it, it was a risk. It was a very risky movie, um, but I think it. I think it. Uh, it really nailed it. What a what a disorienting movie. And you know, dreams are also there's the disorienting nature to to dreams. Um, but on this, real, I just wanted to. Real quick on on Lisa Joy, I, I wasn't intending to have this as like a little aside, but just seeing this picture did something to me. It, it opened up something in my mind, and notice her earrings. See those spikes? It's it's just a very interesting earring, and it reminded me of something. It reminded me of a, a, a tool that is used in piano tuning, and it's called a reamer, R E A M, which is dream ream. That was kind of similar, but. I, I, the piano is such a big part of Westworld, especially the player piano, that autonomous piano that, that is at, in the opener and it, it makes its way into quite a few of the episodes. Um, but I thought, I, I, I have a feeling that she wore those earrings because they are representative of a piano tool. So that was just kind of, you know, you just little, little details like that. I think, um, I think are interesting, but also on the word ream, the player piano, 
they operate off of a ream of paper, off a scroll, of a, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, uh, and if you work in electronic music, this might, these little lines actually resemble, they're, they're one-to-ones of the, the type of imagery that MIDI keyboards, MIDI, uh, connectors that they, they make when you, when you play music, um, through a MIDI, uh, input, yeah. um, they will, they make this exact, that's what, this is what the notes look like. They look exactly like this, the player piano notes. They don't look like they would on like a composition, um, like reading music. They actually look like little holes built, uh, punched into the paper, just, just like that. So there, I, 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 I find, I find the player piano, um, symbolism to be interesting on a lot of elements. I think in some ways it could be an allusion to us. We're kind of like autonomous, player we're we're being we're just playing out what's being fed to us and and we're not actually playing our own notes we're not actually living our own lives and again kind of back to taking control understanding that this might be some sort of dream state um and playing your own tune i think that there's 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 a lesson there's a lesson there uh, westworld was also very interested there, there's so much into in their their opener but this image that's in their opener, the galloping horse that's having its its tendons uh, sewn on by this grand 3D printing machine, which I think that that's telling us a lot about our world too. We, I mean, when we have babies, we literally 3D print them in our body, you know, by our, we're, we're 3D printers, human beings are. We just don't think of it that way, but we we actually do. We, we can 3D print another human. Um, and uh, this galloping horse reminded me of something very similar, one of the most, uh, the first really motion picture, one of the first motion picture galleries was this famous series of photographs called Horse in Motion. Um, and it was the first time that a horse had ever been shown to actually lift all of its hooves up at the same time that had never been proven before. Nobody had ever been able to quantify or, or capture a horse in motion to be able to um, display it in this way and, and, and definitively say at some point during the gallop, all of its, all of its feet are, are up and it's kind of like flying. It's kind of float, it's floating in air. Um, so the horse in motion is very interesting as a, as a first photography um project as a representation of early photography and early motion capture, but also something that I find to be very interesting about horses in motion and also illusion is one of my favorite illusions. Um, let's see if this will play. So this is called, or I'll talk after the music, I guess. We can't hear the music, but we can okay. see it. That's so fine. this is, um, <clears throat> this is called scanimation and it is creating the illusion of motion using parallaxing vertical striping, vertical lines uh, or horizontal lines, depending on which way you're doing the motion. But just through, and, and see those lines that aren't being covered yet? Those kind of look like the MIDI, those kind of look like the, the holes on the player piano as well, yeah. like the ones that are just about to be covered up. Um, and so this is really all you need to trick the mind into believing that there is motion. There's no motion happening. There's no galloping horse, but it is something that is very easy to achieve. So the connection between when I saw that the, the, the galloping horse and the horse in the frames, this is the illusion that my mind immediately went to. And also to illustrate how, um, motion can't, our brain can so easily be tricked into believing that something is moving. You know, this is a really famous optical illusion. It's it's a newer one. Um, it was making its rounds. Uh, a, a Japanese artist created this a couple of years ago, um, and I found I saw it on Twitter and I shared it. Um, but there, these are not moving. These circles are are not moving. There's there's no motion happening. They're not moving up and down. They're not moving side to side. They're so going to try and tell me the arrows weren't moving. I was like, no way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the arrows are, the arrows are spinning, yeah, yeah. but the circles themselves, they are not, they're static. And you can actually, if you just look, if you look at them directly, they will look like they're moving. But if you kind of just look away, like look off screen and kind of, if you look at the circles through your peripheral vision and not your direct vision, the illusion goes away. The illusion of motion is 
is paused and you see that it's really just color spinning around. It, the circles themselves aren't going anywhere. They're not going up. They're not going down. They're not going side to side. Um, but we can be tricked into believing that. I mean, when I look straight at them, it looks like they're getting closer and then they're going up and one's going down and then they're going closer again. And so, you know, it looks very real. The, 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 the perception of motion is, is in our minds, in our minds. Uh, I think, you know, I've always put, I've always put some illusion in my presentations because illusions really fascinate me. Uh, just the mere fact that we have optical illusions tells us that our brain can easily be tricked. This relationship between our eyes and our brain is not infallible, but if anything, it's, it's just open for all sorts of trickery. And there are so many ways to hijack our senses and to hijack what we interpret as happening and what we interpret as real. And uh, the motion is in our mind. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's something that I've been feeling pretty deeply lately. Um, and also back to you know, there's something with the pier player piano. There in their opening is in is in black and white. It's it's uh, it's. In black and white is kind of representative of uh, duality and also analog and something about the older technology. And, and player pianos were actually invented uh, in the late 1800s. And it, it, the, com the complexity with developing player pianos is one of those things that I don't, uh, I, I just can't, get, I can't figure out how they did that. And I, I don't, maybe it's one of those things where maybe, maybe it was just uh, uh, something that was already invented technology. I think, I kind of think all advanced technology has or, always been and just gets introduced to us over time and rolled out over time. But player piano, the, the mechanics of it are actually pretty um, mind boggling. But there's something about- Is that I, the piano I, that, play, that plays itself? This, yeah, this is the one that plays itself. And in the opener, they have like, um, they have an, uh, a, a skeleton of a host kind of like tinkling away at it in the opening credits. And then there's a moment where you see the hands pull back and the hands are no longer playing, but the piano is continuing to play. And- there's that's just a, I, I think that was in the opener of season one, maybe season two. Um, I'm not sure if they continued that um, visual in the rest of the of the rest of the, the show openers. But that that montage is it's so full of symbolism. It's so mm. rich just just to watch the open. I mean, I talk about watching the um, the pilot, but even if you could just get your hands on the opening montage of Westworld season one, it's again the whole show's in there like all the all the themes are baked in there it's it's really really um their opening montage is really um incredible and the music is very 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 good too throughout west world In interesting piano fact i found this out by watching someone on on tv funny enough break yeah. open a piano do you know inside every piano there's a harp a harp i yes. did actually did you know this? Yeah, I did i didn't a harp is actually an integral part of an internal piano it's, the, it's the, actually the heart yeah, it's the heart. It's, yeah. it's, it's the it's the instrument that gets played when you hit the keys. They go to like a, a sort of like long hammer with, with little which strums a harp. Which strums a harp inside That's... every full size piano. There is a harp. I didn't know that. I did not know that. My brain, my brain, is exploding. And it's not easy to get the harp out of a piano. You have to absolutely destroy it because it's you know it's built properly into it. Oh my gosh! Is that why the back of the piano is? is that has that very specific curve and when you really think about it that's the shape of a harp yeah that's so what, that's so like, why you want to that's why oh big grand pianos have gosh. the top open so you can see it all going on yeah whereas like wow. a stand-up piano the harp is like vertical and then like a, a grand piano the harp is horizontal <laughs> i how did i not know that just rise above you learn something every day. <laughs> I did, I did, that's amazing that is wow Oh my god! Okay, that's that. You guys just um, I pause, commit yeah, that no to facts. memory, <laughs> commit that to memory. The AI though. can't control everything. Oh, nice. yeah, that's good one. <laughs> I I love that, um, and I think audio and sound and music. I, again, you know, the word dream that we talked about joy, we talked about trauma, we talked about joy, but it also means music, dream, music, and this is an audio waveform. If you've worked with music. No, this is this is what our voices sound like when we're talking. This is what this is what music sounds like. This is this is what sounds look like. This is a visualization of what sounds look like. I've spent enough hours staring at that. You know that, yeah, looking the waveforms. Yeah, yeah, looking at that on computer screens, playing around with it. 
and then here's um, an illustration of um, from a sleep study, what, what you would get back if you participated in a sleep study. They'd give you um, a chart that shows basically your waves of sleep. And I thought that there was an interesting visual connection there. Um, certain stages one and certain stages two actually kind of follow that waveform pretty well. And then you see these, these mass rises and peaks in stages three and four, but then it kind of evens back out. But there there is the fact that music – and dream are connected etymologically. There, there is something. There's something there. And the sleep study just made me think of um, something very. Uh, this is probably why I had nightmares as a child because I got to. Uh, well, I didn't get to, but I snuck a viewing of Nightmare on Elm Street uh, way too early, and this was definitely why I was traumatized as a kid. This is a still from Nightmare on Elm Street. Part of the movie is that this boogeyman, this villain, this Freddy Krueger is haunting these children in their dreams. He is able to enter the dream state and in the dream state, actually able to, to cause harm in, in their the actual life, killed, killing them in, in their dreams. But he, this is how he enters, makes his enter and exit is, uh, is through the dreams. And one of Freddy Krueger's famous visuals is that he's got like, you know, it, it, one of them was these, these syringes, which I mean, I can't, I can't see a syringe today without thinking of COVIDs. And I thought he always had knives on his hand. I thought that was, no, no, yeah, no, no, usually it, it, it knives, come up. Oh, right, usually okay. some sort of sharp object, but this one in particular, night, this one in particular, I think this is in the first one on the, on the original nightmare of Elm street. Um, he ha his fingers turned into these syringes and it reminded me visually i had done an exploration with realize radio i was creating some some um, computer generated imagery for some of our uh our episode cover art and this one was the twin towers reimagined as two syringes and I, I kind of think that there's something there even the even when you look at the twin towers they actually have those spires on the very top you know they're, they're yeah. these grand you know great great pillars and they have those radio antenna that stick straight up that oh, they kind of look like needles there's something there's something similar about that but what was interesting too as i got deeper into this and kind of fleshed out this connective tissue was the nightmare element of 911 this was I, this is not even all of them but pretty much the next day every paper was some form of nightmare headline. And, you know, I, I think that they have to tell us the truth. And I think in saying that it was a nightmare, they're telling us this, this is not real. It's essentially a, a, a dream. They're, 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 they're hinting at an unreality of the state of this event. And I've said many times, I, I don't believe, the only thing I believe about the official narrative is that two buildings were standing and then they were not. And, and even more buildings than that. But there were some buildings that were perfectly standing at one point and then and then they were no longer. And that's about the that's where I agree with the official. That's that's the the extent of my agreement with the official narrative. Everything that we've ever been shown, everything that we've ever been told about 9-11 is a falsification, is a fabrication in some way. And I I I uh I'm I think not sure in, there was even any planes there. Grand I don't think there were planes. Point. Yeah, I don't think there were planes. I think that the planes were CGI. Um, and I think what we saw that day, the the uh, the broadcast elements, I think all of that was manipulated media projected onto us. Um, and, and what we saw was not real. What we saw was not true. What we saw, we think we essentially were watching a movie that day. And it is interesting, The in the in the year leading up to, to, to 2001, um, there was a massive overhaul of all news delivery systems, all cable news delivery systems, all, all network news delivery systems. They, they did a transition from analog delivery, um, uh, SD, standard, standard definition, um, to get everybody onto this digital HD format and medium, there was a regulation, all this, all this, basically it was enacted that you were no longer going to be able to broadcast at all if you did not switch to HD, to this new fangled way of transmitting. And, um, and so it is, and that was kind of finalized in 2000, the year before. And 
I think that that finalization and that transition from this analog to this digital delivery system and this digital broadcast system of our news, I think that that was kind of the Trojan horse. I think that through this new upgrading of the systems, a it allowed for uh, the trickery to to be broadcast in a, in a new way. And this was being like directly cast to us through our TV screens in what seemed like a live event but it was actually a movie that's that's my theory and i've 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 i love to explore it um but the nightmare thing it, it was just it was reiterated a lot uh, even there was articles about prince harry he recently wrote a book called spare i don't i don't know if anybody read it i don't know why anybody would read it but cool book, um, he, wrote, spare. he wrote a book called spare prince harry wrote a book called spare and in the book he has this whole passage on 9 11 and he uses the frame he uses the the Again, he, he and they even use it in quotes. You know, whenever things are in quotes, you 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 know, like they're they're kind of pointing it out to you for a reason. But um, and and we've had so much of the the royal fakery. We're not going to go into the Kate stuff, but you know, the the royal family is they've always existed to perpetuate lies and to um to just keep us in a state of belief on the way that our world is and uh and their necessary function in the world which is a complete fabrication as well because they don't do anything um but yeah the fact that even prince harry wrote in his book recently about the nightmare of 9 11 I, I think they're they're using that language for a reason and there's there's even more yeah we are living a nightmare we are living a nightmare basically telling us we're in a dreamscape we're in a, a, a we're in a dream we're in a dream. The language, the language, of course, you know, you read, we're in a light, we're in a living nightmare or we're living a nightmare. You're going to read that and you're going to go, oh man, those poor people. But that headline is really telling us something bigger. I, I believe. Um, and back to the nightmare, uh, nightmare on Elm street to be specific and with the twin towers. So when JFK got that kill shot on 11, 63, um, he actually was on Elm street. It, it was a nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, and way. yep, he was driving down driving down Elm Street. There's there's a, right at Dealey Plaza, which is where it all happened. There's a convergence of three roads and he was coming down the far the far road and that road is is Elm Street. That's literally where this nightmare went down. And if you look at a graph of those three roads, they actually form a trident shape. And I think I might have included this on a previous presentation because it's one of my favorites and I really included every every time I get every opportunity that I see that I can squeeze this in there I try um but that same three-pronged trident shape was used in the construction of 9-11 if you look at the how this how the the steel uh, uh exterior of the building how it, it's formed it's actually in these series of tridents that they are, like that are at the forks, bottom but trident tuning they forks. do look like tuning forks i i'm we're going to talk about that a little later but they do a hundred percent they are they do and they are yeah but that you know just these visual connections what are the what are the odds and and more more with 9 11 because i i do think that this was uh something again to essentially wake us up you know um these events, they, they, they can, they can, they can put us deeper into the slumber or they can make, you know, into the Delta, the Delta state where we have a, a dreamless slumber, or maybe they are, they, for some, they can put us more in that gamma, that hyper realization, that awareness state that maybe we are dreaming, but we're aware and we're in control and we can see the dream for what it is. And we can see all these things for, um, the, the tools Hold that on. they are in the little bell rings that they are. And, so a lot, you guys might have heard, but have you seen all of the theories about how Back to the Future predicts 9-11? <clears throat> have you seen any of those I, I, I've, overviews? I've touched on it. Can I, can I just go, I was just going to say one thing about the yes. tuning force. Like, could you just go back to the last slide? Yes. Let's see. Here. Like, if you were looking to like broadcast a nightmare frequency within a dreamscape, it would really make sense to like p perform your rituals like on, on, a, on, a, on the shape of a tuning fork. Or like a, or even more powerful, a, a trident, a tr like a triad tuning fork. Yeah, yeah, that was it. No, that's beautiful. It, it in you, it is like an amplifier. You know, a, a frequency resonator, uh, a, a, an amplifier. Yeah, that it was a broadcast, like a broadcast of great trauma. It was being, it was being dark sorcerers broadcast misery. Yeah, Shaolin voodoo smooth delivery. Ooh, that's great. Oh, that's one of my bars. That's nice. That's a that's a that's a hot bar right there. That's good. 
<laughs> um, with the 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 twin. So I I I there's lots of videos that you can. I'm not going to go into it on all the connections, but there are. It's actually kind of mind boggling if you find you know the YouTube videos about this. Just Google Back to the Future predicts 9/11. There's tons of of uh, videos now that are showing all the little things inside of them. But there's one aspect that I've never seen anyone ever cover as a Back to the Future predicts 9-11. And we're going to mm. do that right here, right now for the very first Boom. time on Rise right. Above. Okay. So there is a brief moment where you see Biff's cane. And Biff is the old guy in Back to the Future. And he has a cane that has a a closed fist like this. And, and it's just the design at the end of his – his cane and he bonks. Yeah, yeah, he bangs uh, him on the head. He bangs him on the head with it. Yes, and this is actually this is actually sparked some Mandela conversations because that closed fist. People, some people remember this famous sculpture called the Thinker. This is Mandela. I I personally always remember it the way it appears on the right side of the screen. But there are some people who will die on this hill that believe that they remember the thinker with a closed fist. We and had actually, Shiva Shampoo, who's watching right now, do a presentation with Brian Stavely all about um, Mandela Effect. They went deep on this particular one. They were even showing pictures of people emulating this uh, statue yes. and yep. doing it in this way that the statue isn't now. Um, and let's, really, and let's really. tie this back to 9-11 too. I, th I think there's so it's it should be explored because there's so many and there's so many instances where it's one way and and then the public is showing it another way. And and why why is there this discordance? But what but 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 what does this mean? What what, what why the thinker? And I when I was doing research on this presentation, I, I knewing that I was going to talk about some 9-11 stuff. I found a very interesting inclusion of the thinker in 9-11, in, in the 9-11 story. So there, there's a company uh, that purported to have offices. I kind of think the whole building was empty, that they were just like row, floor after floor after floor after floor of just leases, you know, like just, just a co corporate commercial space leases, but actually nobody occupying those spaces, just empty, empty floors. Um, but when I have suggested that, uh, on my social medias, I get flooded with people DMing me saying, my dad died and he never returned, or my brother died on 9-11 and he never returned. And every single one of them has told me that they worked at Cantor Fitzgerald. Cantor Fitzgerald, Cantor Fitzgerald, Cantor Fitzgerald. I always hear that name. That is the name that all of the, what I feel like they're bots, the, as soon as I post anything about 9-11, I will get a flood of these responses saying they have personally know people and how dare I. And if they don't say it outright, I've learned to ask, did they work at Cantor Fitzgerald? And the answer is a hundred percent. I haven't heard of one other company. There's not been one other company. So I looked into Cantor Fitzgerald just in this context and lo and behold, they had Rodan's The Thinker at their office and it perished on 9-11. It was one of the, one of the, there was hundreds of millions of dollars of art insurance claims after the, the towers went down. An incredible amount of, I think a lot of these are just, you know, money laundering. Uh, art is just an incredible way, especially insured art um, and falsely claiming insured art. It's just a wonderful way to launder money. Um, and I think that the fact that the thinker is embedded, and this is, this is the thinker, this is Rodan's the thinker. This is a, uh, this is a, a a big boy. The the one that they had in the Cantor Fitzgerald office was purported to be a, a smaller version of this, but it was in their lobby when you walked in. That's the, that's the story. Um, and there's an interesting quote. You know, the thinker to 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 think to, to I think there's a Shakespeare line about thinking and per, perhaps to dream. But uh, Victor Hugo has a quote as well. He's a famous author. Um, to know, to think, to dream, that is everything. I think that there is a connection between thinking and dreaming and 
thinking while you're dreaming, it, when you're finding lucidity, there's there's like the you in there. You're also represented. You're you're actively thinking. I think the the connection there, there's some sort of connection, but it kind of goes further with this 9/11. <sighs> rabbit hole. Um, the the thinker was originally part of a larger work by Rodin. It was a, a, a piece called Dante's Gates of Hell. And this was the original piece of art. And um, the Gates of Hell, th the fact that it was called this, the Dante's Gates of Hell, and then and then you can see the thinker there in the, in the middle. And so this is the first iteration of the thinker. And then it's the story goes that they, it, um, that Rodin decided that the thinker really needs to be on its own. So then he pulled it out of this Gates of Hell and now it exists on its own. But its original form was the, the Gates of Hell artwork, which is another interesting sync to 9-11 because it's language that is used around 9-11. Uh, Biden famously said that he uh, visited 9-11, the ground zero, the, just the, in the couple of days after, and he, that the wreckage resembled the gates of hell. That's a pull quote directly from Biden. I remember um, seeing that interview. Yep, and he said that in, I believe it was in 2013. Uh, 2023 that he said but um it was he just basically quite, mumbled something you mumbled something gates of hell gates of hell but then <laughs> they had to go back so he said that he said that um in like the morning of not of september 11th last year he was giving some sort of speech again mumbling some sort of gobbledygook and they pulled gates of hell out of that gobbledygook um <laughs> but then the next day there or, or no later that evening this is at 10 56 p.m this was a correction published at 10 56 p.m so that night after after the previous one, after this story had gone out about the gates of hell. Oh, and he also used the gates of hell language in the same breath, the same speech. He used gates of hell to describe um, Osama bin Laden, about this, the, the team that uh, followed Osama bin Laden to the end of the earth and sent him to the gates of hell 12 years ago. So in a single speech, he used gates of hell twice to describe 9-11, once with the ground zero and then again with Osama bin Laden and all of that. So there's there's some there's something there. The fact that the artwork is called Gates of Hell, uh, Rodan, uh, uh, the thinker is within that sculpture. The thinker is then in the 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 gates. It's the, the thinker is lost to the 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 great fiery depths of of 9/11. Again, this is more indicate. This was in the Rolling Stone uh, just uh, the month after 9/11. Um, volunteers at the gates of hell. This language was used often. This this language was uh, a big a big part of it. Um, and then also connecting to sleep and 9/11. Uh, we're all familiar with the story of the Sandman. Uh, he is a kind of a folklore myth mythical creature that um, that sprinkles sand or dust or dust, I highlighted, or dust into the eyes of children to bring sleep and dreams. And dust is just absolutely huge with 9-11. Dust and 9-11 are synonymous. We all remember Dust Lady there on the right. Note the checkerboard floor. It, it, we're, oh, yeah. we're kind of disillusioned by that there's so much going on in this image that it's very, very easy to miss, but she's on the checkerboard floor. The woman on the right, um, she's never been identified. She is, her name is the lady in white. And I found something pretty remarkable about the lady in white. She, you know, I'm obsessed with, with similarities and visual templates. And I found a template for her. Uh, look at the way that her hands are specifically the, the kind of claw of the lady in white's hand. For me, it triggered an immediate remembrance of the napalm girl. The napalm girl from Vietnam. This is one of the most infamous images of war. She is running down the street screaming for her life. This is supposedly um, an image from the Vietnam War uh, in 1972. And, um, you know, there's something there's something about war. Les Luther does a really wonderful job at exploring this. But I, I personally believe all warfare is theater. It's all forms of theater and all the imagery we get from war is essentially theater. And then this girl on the left, this woman in white, she also reminded me of a Japanese theater mask. The way that her, sorry for the pixelation, I couldn't find any larger pictures, but there's something about the way that the dust is on her face that seems unreal. And the proportions of her face actually, to me, when I saw this image, the first thing I thought is that looks like a Japanese theater mask. And I think that there, again, there is something 
theatrical about these experiences um, that seem to be gr- experiences of great trauma, but um, it's more like the comedy and tragedy of a theater. I, I think that we're being shown we're being shown trauma, but the but it's it's a show. It's a show. World um, is a stage. The world is a stage. Absolutely. Back. Yeah. Shakespeare. He knew some things, whoever that was. And then we're back to the tuning forks. You know, we're back to the two towers. And you can see in this image on the right there, you can see those spires at the top as well. They've, you know, those little needle points that are sticking off, especially on that left one there. You can see it really clearly. It really looks like a needle sticking out. Um, and, you know, back to dreams is music. Back to dream. This, I mean, in the, the fact that they resemble a tuning fork. I, I think it's almost like it's tuning our, our brains. It's we're, 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 we're being tuned into a very specific frequency of this place of understanding this place. It's almost like we're being tuned down into those, you know, those lower states of sleep, um, away from that, that gamma away from that, that high, uh, lucidity that we can achieve. I think that a lot of these stories, just keep us resonating at a frequency that is kind of offline. You know, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not a true, tr- true state of where we are capable of being and where we should be. Um, and, uh, I think it just kind of keeps us, yeah, keeps us, keeps us asleep. These, these stories. And then again, with Cantor, Cantor Fitzgerald, I wondered what the word Cantor mean meant. And I was not at all surprised to learn that the word Cantor actually is related to music as well, uh, a person who sings. Um, and so, I don't know, just just something, Cantor to sing, music, dream, Cantor Fitzgerald being the one company that I, that I, I never have had anybody reach out to me from any other company on 9-11. It's always Cantor Fitzgerald, 100% of the time. So they're singing in the comments section quite a lot as well then. With Cantor Fitzgerald? Yeah, yeah. You, like you said, they, they were always jumping in the comments with, with yes. anyone doing yes. about 9-11. So there's a, they, were, they, were, they were singing. Yeah, they're singing the <gasps> Oh, my gosh. It was like, yeah. yes, it was a choir. Yes. A choir of them in, in the comments section. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And they're all, and they're all saying the same thing. It's, it, it, it is. Yeah. You're it's reading like, the script. So at least it sounds like it. <sighs> yeah, it, feel, it, does, it does feel like that. Yeah. Um, I, and I saw this, this, you know, as I'm just exploring 9-11, once you kind of get a new avenue of exploration, the things that you discover are just incredible. And um, I found this, uh, there was an interview um, with a first responder. And, you know, I, tr- I do believe that there was a, a lot of stuff, you know, when expl- when the explosion happens, there's a, there's a lot of earth that needs to be moved, a lot of uh, big equipment that needs to be hauled out there. I mean, I do believe this was an active construction site for a good long while, ground zero, but I don't believe it was like an active burial ground for, you know, I don't, I, I, um, I, we can talk about 9-11 in that way, um, at another time, but, um, but this was an interesting, uh, so apparently when there, so there was a story that during the first days of the cleanup that intermittently every now and then there would be a horn blowing in the distance. And that horn was supposed to signify a body found. And so you would just be working along kind of in silence in this eerie, this eerie solemn silence that everyone's just, you know, traumatized there, just doing the best they can. And then, you know, cutting through that silence intermittently would be a horn, again, musical instrument. And, and then everyone would react almost like a Pavlov's Pavlovian thing. You hear the horn and you think someone's died, but this is all just theater of the mind because it's ultimately, it could just be a horn blowing in the background. It doesn't, doesn't mean bodies are actually being found. And this is something that I explored quite a bit in 2020 and 2021 with all the research, with all the rescue and, and, um, uh, all of the efforts, whether it was the first responders or the, the cadaver dogs that they brought out, there were not remains found. There were, there were just zero, zero human remains. There were should found. be shitloads. There like, should be so many. You there can't say be. with the remains of vaporized. You can see, you can see like, you know, pieces of things. They there. found the passports. They found the passports with the plastic covering intact of the 9-11 hijackers. Like, I mean, the, the the illogic nature of that, back to dreams. It's, we're, we're, we're in a lo- an illogical dream state. You know, there's no logic to 9-11. You cannot believe that these buildings were dustified 
uh, these steel buildings crumbled and yet a passport with its protective plastic coating was still intact from an individual who was purported to be on the plane during the explosion what yeah it, from, uh, not from inside the plane maybe a passport that was uh on the other side of the building or something might be in the rubble but not from inside the plane no it just it, it the math the math don't math it really doesn't it's, it really boggles the mind the more you actually can think about it the 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 more of an illusion it just it it just it, it you really begin to see through the veil when you yeah, ask when you learn safer how to ask option the right is question. to just deny it what was that the safer option is to just deny it the less traumatic option for the masses yeah is to well is to, to believe the official narrative and just kind of go yeah it's just easier yeah yeah, it is easier. It does create some some in, some friction uh, internally and externally when you begin to feel to to think this way. There can be it's it's not uh, it's not so widely accepted, you know. Um, but there there are more and more. There are more. Sometimes I say on the show, I say there are tens of us, <laughs> but there are more and more and more people by the day who are not shocked or uh, rattled by this type of exploration. It actually feels it feels good in, in, in their minds. Um, now it, it like, we're, it actually makes more sense than all of the illogic of the official narrative, which has never, ever, ever made sense. Uh, the, um, weir the weirder things get, the more and more people will have the impetus to, uh, sort of like be <laughs> really. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, then, then the doors open for them to explore other, other explanations. I'm a, I'm 100%. I'm I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, I, and I think that things are going to continue to escalate. The the um the strangeness is going to continue to ramp up, and the inconsistencies are going to just escalate. And all of you know the symbols and the colors and the numbers and and the digital fakery that's so apparent. All of this is just going to continue to increase and increase and increase until it is undeniable by all. I think we're going to reach some sort of tipping point where it's just, it just can't be denied. I kind of thought that during the eclipse, we were going to get a glitch of some sort. Like the sky was maybe going to do something completely unexplainable. And then the mainstream was going to have to like. weird photos, haven't you? Noticed? Well, I mean, there was this one phenomenon. And I mean, I've got these two photos here that were sent to me by, oh, by Richard yeah. Ryder, who's been on the show. And he knows this person in America that took these photos, which apparently were taken like 30 seconds apart. Mm. Now, loads of other people have also documented that just seconds before this huge black disc went in, in front of the sun, you could clearly see the moon and it was like nowhere near the sun. Right. Some people were even saying that you could still see the moon in another part of the sky, like down here, while the eclipse was happening. Mm. There was also reports of... Uh, the moon coming from an opposite direction to what you would expect. And there was so many things that people were saying about this. It was almost kind of hard to keep um, a track of it. Yeah. But it, it did seem like all of a sudden some perfect black disc that was exactly the same size as the sun went across it. It really looked like a slide projector from school where they slide, you know, they put those transparencies on and they slide it over. It, it, it looks like... It, it looked like a paper cutout. Uh, you know, I didn't, it, it, first, I don't think that the moon or the sun is like a true physical body. I think it's some sort of projection, like a, pro, a, a false projection. Like, I, I don't think it's a physical luminary body. The, the moon just looks so too translucent at times. It's, it's very, very strange. I don't, you know, and I don't think that we're on this spinning rock going, what is it, a thousand miles? We're spinning at a thousand miles an hour, but yet we're tidally locked with the moon and we never get to see its other side because the moon is too, is also spinning at the just precise amount that we never, we never get out of sync with the spin. And then, and and then we're spinning around the sun and it's just, and yet we don't feel any of that, I, you know. Do you know what I thought was really good? Well, I saw someone else post earlier on or make a meme out of it. It was like, I'm, you know, when this most epic eclipse that's happening, that's not going to happen for another like 200 years or something like that. Mm. Really glad that NASA used like the 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 James uh, the the Hubble telescope or the James Webb telescope or something to film it from space. Cheers for that. Yeah. Because you think they would, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> you know this amazing, 
um, occurrence that you know you're gonna have once to wait. Once in a lifetime opportunity. Well, once in a f once in three or oh, four yeah. lifetimes potentially, you yeah. know. I will say it was my first experience in the totality, and it was pretty spectacular. I, I didn't want to get too hyped about it. I didn't want to be, you know, a cons or, or like too conspiracy minded about it. But I, you know, I being, I was in the path in Dallas. I was actually, we got four minutes of darkness and I've, I've never experienced anything like that in my life. And I, you know, and looking up at that, the black hole sun, you know, truly it was, it felt like a hole. It felt like it was a hole I was looking through. And it also felt like I was being observed. It felt like someone was looking at us. It felt like it was, you know, like the quote, when you stare into the abyss, the abyss stares back into you. That's kind of how it felt. It felt like, or even like it was like a porthole opening, you know, just for a short amount of time when they were just peeking in on us and then the porthole closed again. And they were like, yeah, they're still, they're still down there doing their thing. I guess they're okay. Um, yeah, it, but it was, it was a, um, it was a real, it was a real phenomenon. Um, this is another, uh, the the memorials for 9-11 I think are very interesting. I think they're also um, telling uh, and uh, symbolic in, in the way of these uh, psyops. And there's two things about this. So there's two memorials we see in this. We see the uh, the pools, the memorial pools, and we also see the the light tribute, the tribute and light in the background. Um, shout out to CGI folk. That's how, that's how, how I know him. He's at generated image on Twitter. I forgot his Twitter at, I need to, it's, well, I know him as CGI folk and, um, he's on Twitter, uh, as at generated image, I, I think is, that anyway, but he has a, he has a theory, an interesting theory that I've never really heard. I've never heard, um, proposed before, but the night before 9-11, September 10th, 2001, there was a really intense weather situation in Manhattan. There was Hurricane Aaron that was, you know, torrential downpour, a significant amount of rain. And then it all cleared out. And the next day, the next morning was actually very, very, very clear. Um, so clear that they they had a, an aviation warning called severe clear. It's when there's no clouds in the sky whatsoever. It can be dis disorienting to pilots. So that's kind of interesting that this whole pilot that piloted plane thing happened on a severe clear day. But, um, so one thing that's never been seen in the footage of 9-11 are puddles. If the, you know, where I, I think a lot of the material is fabricated and, and unreal. And if it were real, we should see some puddles in in the, the pothole city that was Manhattan at the time. 90s, early 2000s Manhattan streets were horrifically underserved. Potholes galore. There should have been some puddles somewhere in some of the media, but CGI folk began, he's been studying 9-11 for a decade, for, for a long time, much longer than me. And he, he has an incredible archive of media material. And he began to notice that one thing that was missing were puddles. And so I Googled puddles on 9-11. And the first thing that came up was the, the pools, was the memorial pools there. And I think that that's kind of a, like, I think they're, they're making fun of us. I think it's like they're getting one over on us by making these memorial pools, essentially puddles, things that should be there but aren't. It's almost like, look how stupid they are. We're, we're putting it in their faces and they don't even see it. Uh, so there, that's just, that's one element, the, the puddles. It's, it's new, but I wanted to include it because it's something that I had never looked into. And once I started because of his you know, prompting, uh, it's, it, it's an an anomaly. It's an anomaly. It's like but a small it's, detail that could be quite significant. Yes, exactly. And, um, and also remember when, um, remember when Q would always say, watch the water, watch the water, watch the water. Maybe that's, maybe, maybe he was potentially saying like, watch the absence of water, note the absence of it as well. So something to it. Um, and also with the tribute and light, so that's the that's the um, beams that go up, and they're not two solid beams. They're actually beams of, made out of eighty eight vertical searchlights, as they call it, searching for <laughs> searching for logic somewhere. But um, eighty eight vertical searchlights um, arra that arrange in the two columns of light to represent the ten, ten twin towers. So they're representing the towers in this light. But the 88 caught my mind, um, caught my eye because there's 88 keys on a piano. So I think again, that's another small but significant connection again to the music as a dream, 
all of these, the tuning forks, the, the piano keys, there's, there's something significant here about these, about, about this display, about all of it, um, together. And, uh, one of my favorite songs, uh, and we're getting towards the end, just anybody who's getting antsy, but we're, we're wrapping up, we're getting close. But, um, one of my favorite songs, it's actually a kid koala album called music to draw to. It's very meditative. I highly recommend it. If you're ever doing a creative project and you want really cool music in the background, that's just very chill and, um, serene. Uh, one of the songs on that album is called nightfall pale blue. And there's a line that has always stuck out to me. Um, and it says life is a flicker of light on a screen. And I, I, uh, I don't think that I really, f it's, it's always connected to me in some way, but it, it wasn't until I'm really thinking about this presentation, um, that I kind of am realizing it's, it's, broader and bigger significance than even what I could have imagined when I first kind of caught my ear. You know, sometimes things just catch your ear. Or, you know, when you look back at lyrics that you of a favorite song that you thought had all this meaning, but then 10 years later, you look back and you're like, whoa, this song was we even deeper than I could have ever imagined. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that kind of happened to me with this song as I was preparing the presentation. And life as a flicker of Light on a screen reminded me, of course, of one of my another one of my favorites. I can't have a presentation without including some allusion to Plato's Cave, um, and I think that Plato's Cave is an interesting uh, inclusion in this discussion because it's all about the fires cast on the fire that's casting the shadow, and again, fire, light, loose, lucid, lucidity, light. Um, so just like the fire that casts shadows on the walls of Plato's Cave, you know as the human condition, we are bound to th this world through our impressions that are received through our senses. We're in we're interpreting this world through our senses just because they feel real, just because they appear real, just because they sound real, look real. It doesn't mean that it's true. It doesn't mean that it's true. Um, and and I think that our senses are actually a really clever way to hijack our, 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 our understanding of this world around us. Because they are ours, we hold them in, you know, we even say seeing is believing. If I see it, I'll believe it. Well, seeing's not always believing because you can see an optical illusion and uh, it's going to trick you, you know? So ju just because you see it doesn't mean it's true. Just yeah, because seeing you isn't believing if you see an illusion. Exactly. And I think that illusions, just the mere fact that we have illusions – are just it's brilliant it shows us that we are so easily tricked and there's uh there's countless ways countless there are not just one illusion that our brain falls for there's there's hundreds of different types of visual illusions there's also auditory illusions remember laurel yanny yanny laurel when we you know some people would hear one way some people would hear the other um and that came out at the very same time that that blue dress gold dress illusion came out so at the at the same breath we had the visual illusion of the blue dress gold dress and then we had the laurel yanny that was literally at the same time and those two together they're telling us really every input it can be form of manipulation can be um, interpreted differently by the viewer. And that, yeah, that dress thing really freaks me out because whatever color I was yeah. seeing, you know, I know how optical illusions work. I'm aware of this stuff. I have them for a while. But when I saw that and people were going, no, it's blue. And I was like, how the fuck can you think that? Look, it's, it's blatantly not that. And that was, that was quite a phenomenon that, that, that dress, that stripy dress thing. Did it ever change for you? Could you ever kind of like no. see it the other way? Yeah. There's, I, I, um, I remember there was a time when I was listening to the Laurel Yan. Do you guys remember that, that Laurel Yanny? And it was like one word, but you could hear it two ways. I remember yes. when it, when I, cause I could only hear it one way. And then all of a sudden I started hearing it the other way. And that could, that tripped my mind. Cause I was so convinced. I've, I've, I've it was seen just that one. done with, with a number of different double words. It doesn't mm. just work with one. Right. There's tons of them. And, yeah. you know, I, I think spelling, they call it spelling for a reason. I think our words, we're casting, we don't even realize, but I think the language that we have been uh, uh, taught to use, I think that there's a lot of spell casting that comes from us and we don't even realize. You know, there's some people that, uh, that you know, don't even say good morning because it, when you really think about it, it's morning is about death. And I, you know, I still say good morning. I, I try not to, I try not to impart, um, I try to, I try to just the intent, like if my intent is good, that then that's what's yeah, shining sure. through. Um, but it's a good reminder. 
You know, it's a good reminder. There are these common, and even the word hello, we're constantly saying hell. You know, I don't necessarily believe in a heaven or a hell, but you know, I, I also don't want to be conjuring the beast every time I greet someone. So you're just to be a little mindful of that, but yeah, um, they call it spelling for a reason. And I do think that our words are very, are, are very, um, powerful and we, and sometimes, you know, I think that like small, small talk and chatter, like a lot of, a lot of people, you know, just listen to the news and you just hear them talking and they're just regurgitating. There's not even thoughts in their own brain. They're just regurgitating what they heard from their favorite newscaster or from, you know, <coughs> Um, whatever, you know, newspaper that they're reading, they, they're not even their own thoughts. And so I, I do think that there is, we can take the magic back when we do um, start saying words that are, that are truly from, from us and, and phrases that maybe have never been heard before and things that have never been said before because they're completely new and completely um, from us. I think that there's magic that we can um, recapture in, it's a double-edged sword. The, the spell casting goes both ways. Um, so I think that being more aware of all that stuff, I think that we can recapture some of that magic. Um, and again, back to that light as a flicker of light on a screen. Another one of Leo's films. Um, this is a an alternative movie poster for Shutter Island, his movie Shutter Island. And I, I wrote a very, a very good film. And another one of those. Um, Watched man. that recently. And I think that's a Martin Scorsese film. So it wasn't one of the Nolan brothers, but um, uh, it, it was, you know, um, really excellent at exploring again that relationship with reality that that um that some people can can be uh completely out of touch with with reality as we know it but the, it, you're gonna have to convince them of that because you know they don't they don't realize um and i don't want to do too many spoilers on shutter island but it, it really is a wonderful exploration into the mind of um how we perceive the world around us and how others perceive us in that world and where the truth and um yeah if you have yeah. if you haven't seen that don't be put off because it's a hollywood film it's it really is worth seeing it's so good it is so good and there's there's a dream sequence in shutter island um with him and his wife and this uh this got a lot of play not that long ago um for a couple of reasons um well one i want to first note that her name his wife in the movie is dolores which is another westworld sink so it's just that that name um that name is important and uh and but i also remember seeing this quite a bit this is a fun little template of life imitating art art imitating life um that scene is uh is a uh, a reinterpretation of this artwork called Kiss by Gustav Klimt. And, you know, I, I think that these are not accidents. They're not, um, I think that these types of, we're seeing that a lot. There's a lot of, there's a lot of that even happening. I mean, we saw that with the, with the bridge, with the Francis Scott Key bridge and that relating to the Dali artwork. I think that there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of this, this patterning through in our in our reality and then in our movies and in the world of art and then in the stories that we get shown as reality and i i think kind of all of it is essentially um we are watching a movie that's that's kind of the takeaway um whether this is a uh, uh uh you know uh, when we when we dream it's this electric proj projection in our mind of the of, of light and and sound and color and display and just as vivid as we could imagine in a, a real life i think that that's kind of what what's happening in in our brains and you know there's there's something it's this life is really playing out through our screens we're experiencing all these big traumatic events they're not happening close to home it's really just we're experiencing through our screens um and that's an, that's enough that's enough to affect us but it's also important to note that the word screen has multiple meanings to screen is also to cover conceal to like a concealment uh, a screened fence is you know you're concealing um it's a barrier to light uh, uh covering or concealing um and you know a lot of this is just happening within within our minds and the sooner we realize that i think the sooner we're going to find those that exit door at the back of the at the back of this grand theater uh I think there might be an escape, an escape hatch somehow. You know, but um, you know, going back to the Dolores thing, I've not seen Westworld. Yeah, but um, you know how in Back to the Future the car's called a DeLorean, mm. and that's like the Whoa. actual <laughs> thing that gets them. That's really good. I never thought of that. Times and stuff. Is that? Could that? I never made in? that connection, but absolutely, absolutely, because they sound so similar. Yeah. yeah, and it's all. 
It's not. An, it's not a coincidence. Yeah, it's not a coincidence at all. Ooh, I love that. I'm gonna. I'm gonna share that with Realize Radio. They're gonna love it. We've got a Discord, a very active Realize Radio community just Discord, and these types of tidbits are. <laughs> the it's like chum in the water. It's so good. I love it's it. It's basically a Dolores mobile. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A little dream, a little dream mobile. Um, and I think this we're getting close, close to my last slides. Um. The word awake is also, I think, really interesting because it's not just about sleep. The word awake is more about becoming aware. You awaken to an idea. Um, you awaken to the extent of a problem. That's the example sentence. But it's not just about sleep and non-sleep. Awake is also about just pure awareness. And just like in a lucid dream, you do before you wake up entirely inside the lucid dream, there is a new awareness. At some point, you do gain a level of realization of the dream, a level of awareness of the dream. So you're not awaking out of sleep. You're just strengthening your awareness within the dream. And ultimately, that is what I want to do and explore with where I'm at with all of this. I want to become more aware. I want to have a deeper realization that I have control over this dream world, over this hyper lucid dream state. And also awake is interesting. Um, wake it, with water again, row, row, row your boat. Um, awake is something that is left by, uh, usually we see wakes, you know, by um, uh, a a ship in the ocean or by a, a, a craft on the water as they're heading in a direction behind them is a wake of their path. And I think, you know, I think with what's the point, what, what do you do if you gain awareness? What do you do if you can control this hyper lucid dream state? Um, I think for me personally, and I, that's really the only thing that I can speak fully on behalf of is like my, my own experience. I can't speak for anybody else, but as I've gone down this road as I've been exploring in this way, I just become more aware of my thoughts, my intentions, my actions, my every behavior, every every uh, every state of mind, um, every little fleeting, whether it's a negative or positive thought, I, I really just try to be more aware and, and more mindful of everything that I do and and try to make meaningful changes when I can and um, and and also try not to spend too much time kind of beating myself up for past foibles and past, you know, um, foolhardy actions and things that I, you know, just would kick myself and want to change about the, my actions in the past. I, I, I under, you know, and everything we do leaves awake, leaves awake behind us I, in some cosmic, uh, record. I do think that everything we do, um, leaves some sort of mark, but when you are more mindful of that, I think moving forward, you really can readjust. You can, you can write that boat, you know, like Mr. Collide Boatwright or whatever his name was, you really Slide can, Boatwright. you really can, you can write your ship and you can, um, and I, I read something one time about like nautical navigation. You know, if you are off by one degree, not, oh, there he is, Clyde Boatwright. Oh my God. If you're off by one degree, you know, you're not going to notice that for a while, but after a couple of hours, you're going to be so off course. You're Clyde going to be right, so would notice you straight away. Clyde Boatwright would have you back on in no time. He'd be right in that ship right away. It's in his name. It's what he does. But I think that, um, you know, I, I this whole process for me is helping me write that boat, helping me write that ship, getting, getting, uh, you know, may, I, I honestly think that I was a couple degrees off, off target for a lot of my life. Um, and now I'm kind of, now, now I'm kind of getting back, you know, they say narrow is the gate and I'm, I, I was a little off target for a while. And I, 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 I do feel like being more aware of all of this stuff has, I, I mean, it's really helped me become a better person and in, in, in way it's weird to even say that like conspiracies made me a better human being, but, um, it's more about knowing that I am powerful and that I am, um, uh, I do have, I do have agency in this world and I do have power over my own life and getting out of those victim mindsets. I've been, I've been guilty of that in the past, you know, just thinking like, Oh, woe is me or, Oh, this person did this to me or, Oh, this person, or I wouldn't be here if it weren't for X, Y, Z. Now I just kind of look back and realize everything happened for a reason. Everything that I thought that was bad, it's actually good. And you just have to move forward 
and learn those lessons, write that boat, just move forward. Just, just, you know, and let everything, let everything sort itself out in the wake. And then also the fact that wake means, um, uh, like, um, like funeral. I think there's something, there's something to, to that. Uh, this is one of my favorite back to music and dreaming. If you're a Willy Wonka fan, you will recognize this right away, but it is a poem by Arthur O'Shaughnessy and it is entitled Ode and it starts with, we are the music makers and we are the dreamers of dreams wandering by lone sea breakers and sitting by desolate streams. That first little bit really just, I think there's a, there's a lot baked in there. I think that we, yeah, the, the fact that there's music and dreams right there next to each other and music means dreams. I think that that's a little etymological wink baked in and also talking about the seafaring vessel. We are the lone sea breakers. We are, we are rowing our boat. We are leaving a wake behind us um, in this stream and we can I think we can do some really incredible things with that, or we can kind of be lost at sea, unmoored, just kind of floating or floundering around out there, or we can be very purposeful. Um, oh, there was a, the line of that, one of the last lines of, it says, on whom the pale moon gleams. And uh, I noticed that, uh, oops, I noticed that one of the, the uh, another view of the 9-11 tribute, uh, the moon is actually gleaming right there on the on the water. The pale moon is is gleaming. So maybe there's like a um, a little, I don't know. Maybe it, it, it all feels weirdly, weirdly, weirdly related. Right in between those twin towers of light. The pale I know. Moon. Yeah. Couldn't it be? Yeah. The moon. And I mean, that, that picture was pretty well, well timed. And look at that purple building in the background. <laughs> and it's like two needles about to poke the moon as well. They do. Those spires do look like that needle, that, that moon's about to get his, his seventh jab. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then just what, you know, the final slide again, back to lucid being aware of the dream, um, just reminded, you know, this is back to the, I think the, the, one of the strongest quotes from the movie matrix, how would you know the difference between the dream world and the real world? If it feels just as real, if it, you know, if all of your senses are operating as they, as you imagined that they would like they can in a, in a lucid dream. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's an important question. And then just ending on, you know, the, the wake up Neo, but below that I have written, we are not here to wake up. We are, I, I have come to realize that I'm not here to wake people up. I'm not here to wake up myself. I am here to become a better dreamer. I'm, I'm here to become a, a more in control dreamer and, um, and a more, a more certain captain of my ship. And again, thank shout out to Les Luther for redirecting my mind in that whole awakening conversation and waking people up. And, and that's kind of a fool's errand too. You can't, you can't go set out to wake anybody up. You can just share and you never know what's going to spark something in someone else. Um, but yeah, if you have the, it's yeah. If your mission is to wake people up, it's going to be very frustrating. So yeah, I think that's the end of the show, guys. Ooh wee! That another, was slide another exclusive presentation for one like human vibration. No, that was brilliant. There's a lot to take in. Life is but a dream. Really, really enjoyed that. Now we, we, we're gonna wrap. We're gonna wrap up in a couple of minutes anyway. Me, both me and Andy PG have had a long week in Clown World. Um, but while I've got you here. I'm not going to bog you down in, in all the details about the bridge and the eclipse, but because we, we mentioned it a bit tonight, yeah. we haven't really covered it on the show, but there's just a couple of little things that I found that I wanted to share with you, right? Okay, so I'll just get the screen up. Um, it, it wasn't really this one. This one. <laughs> <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> so, like, obviously, it, it was a big talking point, but now everyone's talked about it so much. I'm not going to go through all my different slides, but um, so it, it, it did start to get interesting when when I noticed the Clyde Boatwright thing. Okay, so so one and obviously, did you see here on the bow of the ship there were two numbers? Thirty-three. Oh my god! So scratched in. Yeah, I might right. check this out. Just got a message from Russ Kieran. Yeah. Hang on. What's yeah, it was Russ Kieran. Um, she was known as the Dust Lady of 9-11, but she had a name. It was Marcy Borders. Marcy Mar Borders? She got caked in dust from the Twin Towers and died years later from cancer she thought it caused. Wow. Marcy Borders. There you go. Thank you very from much. Within the dust. Yeah. Uh, that is a secret that remained hidden for years. See next post. 
You okay, Morgan? Oh, I like that about the dust being a way to keep hidden, you know? Like it's like like a cloud of dust and the truth hides behind that. That's just a screenshot of someone's Twitter page. That's what I mean, that's the key is in there. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, maybe we can have a look at that. We're, we're deciphering this in real time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, this is the guy that was sharing it. Interesting. Um, right, so there were actually three bridges in that day that were attacked, Valley View, Indian River, what? and the Baltimore Bridge. One of them had a fire underneath it, um, and the other one was almost um, almost hit by a landslip that was literally centimetres away from it. Okay, three bridges in, in one day, just a coincidence. This I did Larry, not know that. That's why. Larry Silverstein, this one isn't true. Okay, this is just a silly <laughs> meme about a that. one oh trillion uh, insurance policy on the Baltimore Bridge. Um, so there was a CEO of the company that died six days before, a bit fishy. Nothing super good there, but check this out. This came from Auntie Covia once again. On the front cover of The Economist, uh, it said the world ahead in 2024. And if you look on the right-hand side, there is what looks like an aerial shot of a shipping container. Yeah. And just to the left of it, there is what looks like a graph of a very steep, steep economic downturn or like a, a, a stock market crash. Oh, my God. Yeah, do you see that? Everyone and see the that? container, yeah, the shipping containers have the same color blocking pattern. Yes. Uh, the blue and the red and the white over there on the side. Ooh. Yeah, okay. Now, were you aware, HV, of, you know, like when the Maui... Oh, yeah, the Maui fires. The Maui yes, attack the took Dew. place, and there was this phenomenon where the Mountain Dew um, packaging, there would be like a new flavor of Mountain Dew. Yeah. There was one called Maui Burst, and there was another one called Baja Burst. No, no, sorry. What was it called? Maui... Maui heat wave, I remember, mate. There was Maui scorcher. There was a few. Uh, oh basically, there was at least two places, including Maui, that got hit by these tropical storms, or whatever they said they were. And they were. Yeah, but there's, uh, there's other names of their drinks. There was like blackout. Flavors. Yeah, yeah, but there's yeah, like a it's, sort of like geo storm. It's like the, you know that Illuminati <laughs> card wow. game. Yeah, Baja like blast. That. They, they That's just right. named loads of different shit that could happen to you. Yeah. So if you look here, now we know that the bridge is the, is the what's he called, Francis Scott Key Bridge. Yes. And he, and he pens the Star Spangled Banner. Right. Look at this flavour of Mountain Dew. Star mm. Spangled Splash. Oh, my Oh, there goodness. we go. Maui Burst and it was Baja Blast. That was it. Yeah. So Baja's this, in this is, I mean, yeah. there's, there's like a higher, there's, because I don't think humans are like, like laughing at all i don't think humans are doing this i don't think humans can keep secrets well enough to to have this be a human thing i think this is like coming f from an order from above like from an unseen a hidden hand of some like sort an ancient artificial intelligence that has been running yeah. the show or the order from the, AI, AI, yeah. the yeah. underworld yeah yeah so i thought this was particularly particularly good that there was like a you know star spangled splash flavor mountain dew i thought awesome that's wild but it, it does it does get better now i'm sure you've heard about this there were these three separate things that were going on on the same day april the 8th one yes. nasa was firing rockets into the shadow of the eclipse and it was called operation apep now apep is the uh the serpent that i think eats the sun in in egyptian folk law i might have got that they were firing dicks at it yeah <gasps> um, all rockets are like phallic imagery it's it's all dick jokes um yeah. it's it was the feast of an annunciation and also yeah. there was the CERN particle accelerator, which was being f not only flashed up again um, after I think it had been put into hibernation in 2021, it's being turned up to a frequency that it's never been turned up to before. So it was a very important day at CERN mm. um, and everyone was going crazy about this. It was, uh, they also launched the white, Ra the <laughs> white rabbit collaboration which I thought was just great. Yeah, so CERN... <laughs> See, that's just bait. They're baiting. Yeah, they're baiting us. Yeah, 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 they're baiting. And, yeah, and actually, Les Luther shout out again to him. I've said his name a million times, but he, he, he deserves it. He was at CERN on April 8th. He went to Switzerland. He went to CERN. He, oh, wow, he, he went there. Yeah, and, and it was big nothing burger, nothing, you know? I, not that maybe the, the evildoers don't come out in all their hooded robes, you know, to the public to see, but... You know, you'd think that he's really about that life, isn't he? Like he went to Ukraine, that yeah. guy. You know, yeah. He's, yeah. 
He went to Paris during the riots, showed that it was really just a theater set, went to the Ukraine at the very beginning of the war, where the he went to Kiev, he went, you know, to these places that were supposed to show, you know, the, like the heaviest of the fighting. He goes there, there's nothing going on. You know, it's, um, he's been, yeah, that's, that's kind of his thing. He, he wants to see it for himself. He wants to uh, see it with his own eyes. And every single time he goes to see it with his own eyes, what is shown to him um, or what, what actually he's witnessed to is just the act is like immersive theater. It, it, it may seem just like, you know, when you live in a, when you're in a, a place that's under attack, you hear those, and I use under attack in quotes, but you hear those sirens, you, you know, you, you, there, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of psychological tricks that are going on. Uh, again, auditory uh, hearing, you know, the seeing smoke in the distance, there's all these things to indicate trouble, to indicate danger, but it's just display. It's a sensory display to make us think that we're in, tr in trouble, but it's theater. Uh, let me just rewind back to the uh, CERN Large Hadron Collider. Yeah. Do you remember the reason they built it? They were searching for a certain thing. The God particle? Yeah. Do you remember what it's called? No, I don't. It's called bullshit. Is what it it's, is. Called the <laughs> Hig it's called the Higgs boson. Oh, yeah. And that guy just died. Yes, he did. Peter Higgs, the guy who theorized the Higgs boson before it was c d discovered at CERN. Check this out. Bosons are... Bose. Boat terminal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boson controls the ship. Us back to water. Yeah, the Higgs boson. Oh. So this guy who came up with the whole theory of the Higgs boson particle, aka the God particle, that CERN was specifically looking to further explore, precisely during yesterday's solar eclipse, he died. He died. Um, uh, you can't make this shit up. What are the odds? So uh, yeah, I like to say the are. odds are a hundred percent. I say know? the odds are about the same as a queen dying. On like, a nine it? eleven days yeah, after yeah. this, would you like to see now? Obviously, the the theme of tonight's <laughs> show, due to your fantastic presentation, has been that life is but a dream. Would you like to see something even more fantastically ludicrous about this? Yes. Check this out. If you follow the path of the eclipse, right, it goes directly to Edinburgh, Scotland, which is the location of where. Peter Higgs, the bosun. And I was in Scotland last summer. So that's the, literally the line of Michael. Yeah, so this, this is the work of Mark Gray. I do show some of his wow. infographics. And he's saying the sun gate opened on April 8th, 2024. No, it wasn't Jesus that came in through the eclipse portal. Rather, it was Professor Peter Higgs who was exited through the eclipse portal. Professor, mm -hmm. Professor Higgs theorized the existence of the mysterious God particle and that was eventually discovered at CERN. He died April 8th during the solar eclipse. Mm. He's saying that he went through the portal, but. <sighs> That's cool. I've never seen that. I've never seen that uh, that straight line from Austin to Scot or from Dallas to Scotland before. That's cool. And that's, yeah, that was the, the path. The path went right, right that way. So that makes mm. sense. Yeah. It's weird as fuck. It really that is. is. <laughs> the like, timing what, what is are the divine. Yeah. What are the chances? There aren't. There aren't there, yeah. There's no chance of that. Yeah. And um, speaking of, of Ooh, divine, yeah. um, another observation which he's made here, I, I believe this is his work. <laughs> he was sharing it. It looks like his work. Um, this, you know, this whole angel, seraphim, cherubim, Raphael, yes. uh, the actual biblical descriptions of what these things look like. They're not even humanoid. Whoa. They're literally like feathery, starry, multi limbed that's almost, beautiful Whoa. Almost and this is what the eclipse apparently looked like yeah wow that's a cool connection that's that's and those are called seraphims is that right or um yeah that there's a few it? different uh, that yeah. one bottom left lance yeah wow. yeah i see the one bottom left that's your cat rotational solid they look like wings they look like feathered wings coming off yeah now that you mentioned that that's crazy yeah. yeah, now, uh, did you hear that also during the eclipse time, there's uh, like some massive Kirkada, um concurrence where these two different types of Kirkadas or locusts, one's on a 13-year cycle, one's on a 17-year cycle, the grubs come up with the ground. This year in April, they're I've both heard. coming up at the same time. Well, Ooh. Jason Archaics, um, he made this post. This is one of the many illustrations in the 474-year-old Augsburg Book of Miracles. Uh, this means it is a depiction of an event prior to 1550 AD. Mm. What is shown is a locust cicada plague during a total eclipse. 
The German mm. Gothic script details 123 unusual sky events that have been recorded up to the year of publication. Wow. Yeah, they say they're they were going to get we're going to get swarmed any minute now. Yeah. Oh, what, so there's just a massive uh, like a cloud of of cicadas traveling across the US waiting eating everything in their path. And that's basically. interesting because I've heard you know this the the the, the eclipse darkened the sky well i've heard i guess biblically too that the cicada bloom will also similarly darken the skies that's funny that's because when the the phoenix phenomenon happens that the sun darkens hmm yeah there's, defi there's it's definitely all the same shit here. it's yeah, yeah these are all this is like all recycling yeah fractals well, it's all, it's all, it's all, it doesn't matter what geographical biblical. location what culture it's all the same shit yeah, yeah, absolutely. All the same stories. Yeah. So once again, right, thank you very much for another amazing presentation tonight, HV. You, it's always a pleasure to have you on. Um, we, yeah, we're, we're basically going to wrap it up. It is, uh, it is 10 to midnight anyway. Ooh, we. So we just want to say thank you very much. Thank and uh, it, I'm sure it won't be too long until we have you back on anyway. I love my merch. I was so wonderful meeting you guys in person. You're, yeah, it you're, was cool, man. You're, really good. Such, a, such an excellent time to get to to see y'all in, in, in the flesh. And thank you so much for outfitting me with my new gear. I love it. I'm so excited to wear it today. And it's it's beautifully designed. I've seen, I wear this out and about and I've seen people checking it out. So. Um, awesome. Thank you very yeah. much for representing. Rise above. Thank you guys. Rise above. Generate, generate. Rise see you later. Above. Rise above. Abstract. Right guys. Thank you very much for tuning in once again. Don't forget next week we are taking a break on Friday night. There isn't going to be a live show, but there will be a Rise Above broadcast because Slick Rick has prepared loads of edited bite size and I will make a slideshow. Um, it, it, you've seen them before. It's just called riseabove.tv. We won't be live. But on Thursday night, you've got to remember to get your tickets for Ra Academy with Inspector Veg. There are spaces still available. It's a two-hour interactive Q&A Zoom conference and Inspector Veg is going to be talking all about holistic health, the electric food list, ridding in your body of parasites and all that good kind of stuff. Worms. Well, yeah, I had to get rid of he worms. He loves a worm. He loves, he loves to chat about those worms. So, yeah, guys, um, uh, the, we will be back the week after that. I do believe it's about time we did customer services. <sighs> I've got, yeah, we've got a few things to talk yeah. about. Yeah, customer services is uh, is coming next. I've got I've got a quite a good Don't one forget, to drop on you. guys, Patreon, yeah, $3.33 a month. It works out to be £3, get, £3 a month. You'll get some... Get, some, really, shit, yeah, you get some real good rants from Andy PG, I reckon. Oh, yeah. I can, I can feel some coming up when I give him the GoPro. Right, let me... Uh, here's a... I'll tell you what. I'm currently being abused by the state. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to play us out with um, a clip from last week. It's, only, it's four and a half minutes long. Last week, Ramish Radio. This is Magic's Gritty, myself and Malik. We will see you it live in two weeks' time. Customer services. Word. Michael. No, where's... Here oh, it is. Come on, Lars. That was clearly a sign-off. This is taking ages. Look, there you go. What baseline about sick magic I tell them? This is World War 33, they crawl on hands and dirty knees, they're climbing dirty trees. This is World War 33, crawl on hands and dirty knees, climbing dirty trees, with more than 32 degrees. In asymmetrical warfare, we don't find missiles land to air, or projectiles air to land, let me elucidate and expand. Silent weapons for quiet wars, epic violence will silence yours. It's prying doors, violating your bio claws. Schwabi and tech permeates your pores, severing souls straight from their source. Violating all natural laws, you're a fourth industrial whore. And the stakes of the forum, social credit point scoring that protein block from yesterday morning. It came with a carbon reduction warning. Who? Oh. The carbon is you, fourth industrial biofuel. The moon is hungry, he's got to eat too. Don't deny him of his cruel. Food for the moon, I explained that literally on this tune. It's too much for the room, MC Manic, they're gonna learn soon. 
No less than it all, in the cure, up front, to the fore Don't think that we won't bring it right to your door Kinda leave the side to sit back Who that pawn the attack, been gone for a minute Now we're back, no slack, just fact We're back, back on the tank, tap on the prowl Send me dead on the track Pull the trigger, push the button What you waiting for, get it started That pan departed, disregard it, get cold hearted Ain't gonna come round again, ain't gonna tell him again Yo, set your mind round the bend Ain't never gonna comprehend a new trend We are send you to send Practical magics or quantum physics Fast and bargains with evil spirits Who acquiesce to appease my critics Infinite essence can't be diminished When the fear inside your heart is extinguished Spell cast Enochian in English Are you LL the unlimited linguist? Yes Check Sumerian kings list Nephilim ethics of Aryan princes Skeptical methods Mothers and witches and shamans Who mix plants in the kitchen Tied to a stake against their wishes That's with the kerosene pitches Burned to a crisp No word from a witness Tied by the neck and then dump them in ditches What? Spreading the knowledge of source Perplexed by a powerful force Stretching the timeline to alter the course, history's homage to archontic laws. Well, I'm here to revive what they're hidden and I keep it alive. I make sure the sun, moon, and the stars and the planets collide when I vocalize. Well, you better know your place. Double the front or screw your face. I've been the point in time and place. Set the tempo and the pace. Configuration accurate, man, I can make it to the touch of the taste. Get on the line on the second rep. We are out to get all in your whoa. Them beats unbeatable. No antidotes, untreatable. First impressions uncurable. Second opinion terminal. Wait for the break when I bust sensing, be critical. Gotta shake a leg, gotta move your feet to the beat, to the beat, to the break, to the break, gotta make for the break. To this phenomenon, a clear sickness as it's coming on, that's their business. So I carry on, I'm beating my fist on the walls of Babylon. And it's vicious if you're a vagabond, the British Isles, it's not Avalon. The ambitious escape to the Amazon, life is malicious when you're climbing the echelon. We gotta break them chains, be personal best and make them gains, it's a hurtful mess. So I've came from eternal threats on a long campaign. Enough stress and I gotta maintain. I keep going and I can't complain. On a mobile flex with no disdain, on a global flex, so I gotta maintain. So the rates of fire and the man, gonna turn it up on the sand. See me in attack and the plan Man, I can't see bad boy for them When I raise my voice upon the night Then the crowd and all I'm gonna bust at them And tell them too many MC want the many men We're gonna ride a tune to the end, y'all Send a wreck the fire and the man Gonna turn it up on his head See me in attack and the plan Man, I can't see bad boy for them When I raise my voice upon the night Then the crowd and all I'm gonna bust for them And tell them too many MC want too many Want too many, rise above Yo, Up against an immovable object Placing bets on illusional odds set and it's cruel from the onset, killing you slow is the usual project. Still thriving despite the drawbacks, you're writing, designing formats. The mind's climbing, not wiping the floor map. Yo, I gotta ride that rule back. Greasing cogs inside the Leviathan, keeping watching the ice conspiring. Sound of the siren, kill to the flames and the furnace is firing. Not expiring, we're expanding, inquiring to gain understanding. A fall from the top equals a crash landing. You got fooled by the devil's rebranding. Gotta break the link in the chain, individual never the same. Break the loop, don't go round again. Understand, you gotta comprehend. Inside the mix, you gotta comprehend. Hey yo, send a rectify and the man, gonna turn it up on his end. See me in attack and the fan, man, I can't see bad boy for them, bad boy for them, bad boy for them.